committee hearing on the uh, Senate Economic Affairs uh, Committee is now called to order. This is a uh, subcommittee of uh, the Committee on Economic Affairs. We would like to uh, first of all acknowledge the presence of our uh, uh, dear colleague, Senator uh, Nancy Binay. Thank you for uh, joining us. I miss presiding uh, committee hearings. <laughs> This is my first uh, in this uh, uh, Congress. We would also like to uh, acknowledge our resource persons uh, present here today. I can see uh, Secretary Toots Ople. Thank you very much uh, for being here, Kabayan. But uh, I don't want to miss anyone. So I would just ask our uh, committee secretary to acknowledge our uh, resource persons present here today. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Chair. For the National Economic and Development Authority, we have Yusek Carlos Bernardo Abad Santos, and we have Director Gurley Grace Casimiro Ipiten. For the Department of Trade and Industry, we have Yusek Fita Aldaba and Director Janet S. Cuenca, as well as Ms. Irene Forcadilla, Ms. Daniela Janica Quaresma. For the Department of Labor and Employment, we have Yusek Carmela Torres, we have ASEC Paul Vincent Anuver, Mr. Patrick Patriwaran, and Ms. Jean Arsolino. For the Technical Education and Skills Development Authority, we have Attorney Tonisito Umari, the Deputy Director General, as well as Attorney Joyce B. Balong. For the Department of Education, we have Yusek Arturo De Castro and Samuel Sullivan, Director Samuel Sullivan, as well as Attorney Jemmy Rose Lood and Ms. Dayanara Hoson. For the, the uh, Department of Social Welfare and Development, we have ASEC Elaine Faliarcuna. And for the Department of Interior and Local Government, we have ASEC Rolando Puno and Attorney Gino Lavarias. For, of course, for the Department of Migrant Workers, aside from Secretary Toots Ople, we have USEC Hans Leo Kakdak and ASEC Jerome Pampolina. For the Department of Budget and Management, we have USEC Christina Clasara accompanied by Mr. Mark James Evangelista. For the Department of Finance, we have Yusek Shelo Magno, Ms. Krishka Violago, and Ms. Camille Iliao. For the Department of Information and Communications Technology, we have Attorney Giselle Batapasike. That's all for now, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Ms. Komsek. We would also like to acknowledge some of our colleagues uh, virtually present. I, I, I saw a while ago Senator Rocco Copimintel, our uh, minority leader. And uh, of course, uh, we, we welcome our uh, resource persons uh, present here today. Uh, we are uh, glad to have you in the discussion of this uh, particular measure, Senate Bill number 129. May I just give a, a short opening statement uh, again, to our esteemed colleagues, uh, resource persons, magandang umaga po. Tayo po'y nagpapasalamat sa Diyos sa pagkakataon na ito na ibinigay niya sa atin para uh, magkaroon ng hearing ngayong umaga. At the onset, let me uh, uh, extend my deepest gratitude and appreciation to the chairperson of the Committee on Economic Affairs, Senator uh, Grace Po for entrusting to us the duty of uh, tackling Senate Bill Number 129 or the Trabaho Para Sa Lahat ng Pilipino Act. As the subcommittee chairperson, we are uh, honored and privileged to facilitate our ways moving forward as we transition from employment recovery strategy to the continuous creation of quality jobs for our citizens. Madalas po siguro naririnig nyo sa akin na trabaho ang trabaho natin dito sa Senado. And uh, we say this often to remind us 
uh, remind ourselves of why we are here and whom and for whom we work for. Mula po noon hanggang ngayon, prioridad talaga natin dito sa Senado ang pagpasa ng mga panukalang batas uh, na sisiguro sa kapakanan ng ating mga kababayang Pilipino, lalo na sa larangan ng paggawa at paglikha ng trabaho. Ilan lamang po sa ating inakda at inisponsor na mga panukala dito na ngayon ay ganap na batas na itong uh, siyempre Department of Migrant Workers Act na talagang uh, alam na alam ng ating secretary at uh, ni Yusek Hans kung gaano tayo naghirap dito. Yung Tulong Trabaho Act, yung uh, RA11230, yung First Time Job Seekers uh, Assistance Act, Telecommuting Act or Work From Home Act, RA number 11165, maging yung doktor para sa Bayan Act. Marami pa ang iba na panukala ang ating uh, ipinaglaban at uh, patuloy ipaglalaban dito sa Senado. And with the opening of the year 2023, yung pong Philippine Statistics Authority released the number of unemployed and underemployed persons in the country. We had about 2.18 million unemployed and 7.16 million underemployed Filipinos as of November 2022. We have mentioned that this is indeed a uh, welcome development because uh, as we have seen a downward uh, trend in our unemployment numbers since uh, August of uh, last year. However, we also saw a uh, yung pong ating, uh, if you can uh, go back to our slide, yung underemployment numbers natin uh, in the country increased from uh, 6.67 million as of October 2022 ngayon po ay 7.16 million in November 2022. Again, we wanted to uh, tackle many things through this uh, 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 particular measure from creating an enabling uh, environment that will support the growth of micro, small, and medium enterprises as well as industries with high potential for employment, for job generation, developing general interventions as well as targeted uh, as well as targeted measures to ensure the employability and competitiveness of our workforce and improving the collaboration between the government and the private sector, among others. Uh, we also need to be better prepared for the future of work, including, the, including dealing with the impact of the fourth industrial revolution and even the fifth industrial revolution, as well as the growing digital economy and gig economy, along with many other issues facing our labor force. We hope that uh, through the establishment of this uh, framework for our National Employment Action Plan and with the help of our co-workers in the government and our uh, partners in the private sector, we can um, create at least 1.7 million jobs annually and navigate the dynamic and ever-changing labor market for the benefit of the entire Filipino workforce. Again, we thank you so much for being here and we look forward to working uh, with everyone. At this juncture, I'll give the floor no more. Um, at this juncture, we will uh, give the floor now to our uh, resource persons. Unahin na natin si Secretary Tuts Ople. Siya yung uh, uh, highest ranking uh, government official na guest natin ngayon. At uh, not because she is also my kababayan. Unahin ko po siya. Okay. Secretary Ople, uh, kababayan namin, ni Senator uh, Nancy. You have the floor, ma'am. Thank you for being here. Thank you, um... Mr. Chair, and uh, uh, thank you, Senator Nancy. And uh, I, I really wanted to um, be present just to register our department's full support to Senate Bill 129 um, for the following reasons. Number one, I, uh, while we are negotiating bilateral labor agreements with other countries, I noticed uh, Uh, Mr. Chair and uh, Senator Nancy, that the other side is very well prepared. They know what they want. They have very clear employment um, uh, strategies of their own. And um, we in the department would also want to be guided uh, for future talks. Um, how do you, uh, there should be a synergy between the domestic or national employment plan and strategies with our own overseas employment program. And so we believe that having 
this um, interagency that will look at uh, employment. Uh, it's not really just recovery, but I think employment, acceleration, uh, expansion of employment opportunities is very important kasi hindi po maari na magkaiba ang lente for overseas employment, magkaiba ang lente sa national employment. Dapat po complementary yun. Second, sir, and um, I, I, I know uh, this is also very important sa inyong dalawa. Um, we have seen another tragedy in Kuwait yung pong nasunog na katawan ng ating kababayan doon, which drives home the point that we need an employment plan, a very clear long-term, medium-term employment strategy to increase the participation of women in the um, Philippine labor force so that they have very clear alternatives to leaving the country as domestic workers. So, yun po yung nakikita namin na malaking gap. Right now, uh, based on 20, 2021 figures, yung participation po ng kababaihan sa ating um, domestic labor force nasa 39% lang po. And it has always been that way historically yung trend na yon so we see a need to propel this and 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 strengthen also the participation of women in in the domestic uh, uh, labor force po, where they will be more protected and there will be clearer career paths for them uh, lalo po pag, pag graduate pa lang po sa eskwelahan or kung test the graduates po yan paano po para magbukas yung mundo ng ng paggawa sa ating mga kababaihan um yung specific amendments lang po if i may uh, mabilis lang po sir um if we can uh, include uh, a representative from the overseas uh, meron po tayong one representative from employers organizations one representative from the labor organizations baka pwede po yung sa labor isang pang overseas um, and then sa section 6 po letter B baka rin po pwedeng isama conduct a comprehensive analysis of the employment situation and labor market in the country uh, review of existing policies and programs um, may isama lang po yung review of uh, global employment and economic trends. Kasi katulad po sa Europe, aging population na po sila. So, uh, kaya very attractive ang Pilipinas sa kanila. Uh, also po, dun sa letter C, harmonized employment, uh, livelihood and training projects and programs of the national government in tandem with the private sector. Kasi yung information po madalas nagbumula rin sa private sector. Sa letter F po, kung pwede sama sa among other partners, yung ating overseas Filipinos and OFW uh, groups po, um, dahil source din po sila ng investment. And uh, sa panghuli po, sa section 7, establishment of IAC working groups, Maisama din po yung uh, doon sa puntong uh, shall work on developing employment recovery and job creation in specific industries and emerging sectors such as but not limited to health services po uh, considering na isa yan sa pinaka primary uh, labor markets din natin uh, here and uh, overseas. Um, Yun lang po, sir, from the DMW. Full support po kami. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Ople. I, I cannot help but uh, remember the same words coming from the President himself during the LEDAC meeting, the word synergy, uh, as you mentioned earlier, and the importance of uh, uh, synchronization in government's efforts to uh, create jobs. And as uh, mentioned earlier, not just focus on uh, employment recovery, 
but also to the uh, continuous creation of uh, quality jobs to our citizens, improving our education system, uh, addressing job skills mismatch, and uh, as you mentioned earlier, the importance of uh, looking at this uh, particular uh, uh, data that you mentioned, no, thirty nine percent lang yung uh, domestic ano natin for uh, for women, and uh, I know I, I know testers here during my time uh, sa testa mas mataas lage fifty plus percent. No? I don't know about uh, this uh, this year's uh, uh, data. And then you made mention about yung representation of overseas. Okay na po yun. And the uh, importance of uh, reviewing yung global situation. Uh, maraming salamat po. Uh, we'll uh, proceed with uh, the Department of uh, Finance. Uh, Yusek Shello, Magno. May... Oh, yes, uh, uh, Senator Binay. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Hindi, um, Sec, Toots, may dito ba kayo kung ilang babae yung nag-a-abroad naman? Um... Dati po, mga siguro 10 years ago, lopsided towards men, uh, male OFWs. Ngayon po, I think, lamang na po yung kababaihan slightly. Mga nasa, siguro nasa 59, mga ganon percent. Uh, lamang lang po ng, ng konti. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, we uh, uh, proceed now with the, the Department of... Uh, Finance uh, Representative Yusek uh, Shello, are you recognized? Thank you, Your Honor. Um, the department supports the, the bill, especially the uh, goal to unlock the opportunities for MSMEs, and also the bill's intent to ensure that there's coordinated effort in addressing uh, issues of unemployment, underemployment, the rising precariousness and informality of work arrangements. We also recognize the important role of this interagency uh, committee that the bill is proposing to create to address the, the need for um, uh, additional trainings, transfer of technology, upskilling, reskilling, apprenticeship, and on-the-job training needs of our workers. The only additional recommendation that we are making is that maybe the bill can mandate the interagency committee to review all the incentives given to MSME and harmonize it with the intent of the bill, particularly in uh, incentivizing uh, upskilling and training of workers. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, before before we uh, go to, an to another uh, 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 agency of the government. Yung uh, binanggit mo, Yusek uh, Shello, kasi I, I'm very interested about it, no? To 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 look into the uh, incentives na we are giving to MSMEs and uh, uh, other entities in order to uh, attract more uh, business activity and create more jobs. For example, uh, yung RA 9178, yung Bambi Act, uh, may provision dyan ng tax exemptions to accredited uh, BMBEs o yung Barangay Micro Business Enterprises. Yung RA 9501, nandyan din yung Magna Carta for MSMEs, provides easier access to tax and duty incentives and assistance to uh, uh, have local support networks and establish market linkages. Through DTI, alam na alam na nga DTI ito, no? And then you have the Magna Carta for uh, PWDs. Uh, may incentives din sila to uh, private entities. Um, what I wanted to find out is uh, yung uh, goal kasi natin dito with the National Employment Action Plan to shift from employment recovery to continuous generation of quality job uh, opportunities. Ano pa yung... Uh, naiisip natin ng uh, DOF na po pwede nating uh, gawin uh, differently from what we have been doing before with the National Employment Recovery Strategy to further create and uh, sustain such uh, an environment. 
Thank you for your honor. It's not that uh, we want to uh, put additional burden on SM MSMEs and put additional conditionality in terms of accessing incentives, but maybe part of the deliverables of MSMEs, particularly po in upskilling and training. Uh, right now, kasi we're already monitoring the incentives that we're giving to companies, for example, under CREATE. So part of the deliverables that we can put for companies would be to ensure that there's upskilling, transfer of technology, retraining. And so it's not just, for example, on disability. So it's not just about hiring uh, disabled individuals, it's also making sure that we upgrade their skills. So maybe incorporating that intent of the proposed bill into the different framework of the incentives programs of government. That's very interesting. Again, the word synergy uh, comes to my mind and TESDA is very much aware of our Tulong uh, Trabaho uh, Law, which is... Uh, not just creation of jobs, but also upskilling and uh, retraining uh, programs for our uh, workforce. We, we call on uh, NEDA now. Thank you. Uh, sino po ang representative ng NEDA? Is her chair? Yes, sir. Yes. Please, uh, you're Good recognized. Morning. Uh, Good morning. Thank you. Yes, and um, again, the National Economic and Development Authority echoes the sentiments of both the DMW and, uh, and the Department of Finance in supporting the institutionalization an expansion of the nurse as it contributes to the Philippine Development Plan 2023 to 2028 strategy. We have three, three, three strategies there in the Philippine Development Plan. The first is to increase employability. The second is to expand access to employment opportunities. And the third is achieve shared labor market governance. Further, the nurse will strengthen the coordination and partnership among nurse member agencies and stakeholders towards a smooth implementation of employment programs. We, we have um, just five um, recommendations on how to further improve the, the proposed bill. Um, well, the first one is a general recommendation that the National Employment Action Plan should serve as the action plan for the labor chapter of the Philippine Development Plan. Thus, developing or updating the NEAP has to be done in line with the PDP, which is basically um, done every six years and updated every three years. Now, the second is, the Yes, second, uh, Senator Nancy. Um, Doon sa PDP, ano na, ano na tayo? Which are we going towards the end or first no, we, years or? We, we just i know we just launched and uploaded the Philipp um, the philippine development plan so it was approved by the president um december of last year it's been uploaded in our website and we will have a launching um on january um 31st and more than six years meron din ba tayong plan? we don't have a, we don't have a a long-term um plan so, wala tayong long term. But we have a long term vision and the long term goals of which the um, six development plans, would, uh, the four six year plans, should be anchored or should be geared, geared towards. So, so basically, we just plan every six years. Ko ano yung term ng presidente? Hanggang, hanggang dun lang yung plano natin. Yes, which, yeah, 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 um, which, yeah, yes, which, And wala ko ba tayong plano? to go longer than six years. Kasi, um, remember, yung pagkikreate ng labor force natin would require more than six years. Kasi, um, katulad nga nung paulit-ulit na binabanggit ni ng ating chairman, di ba? Synergy yan eh. Yeah. So, kailangan ngayon pa lang yung DepEd natin, yung CHED natin, pinagahandaan na kung ano ba yung mga uh, kurso or ano ba yung mga emerging uh, jobs or industries. So, it would take more than six years. Your so, Honor, wala ho ba tayo? Um, we started with having a long-term goal and a long-term vision of which our of which our goals um, in the next 25 years were articulated in the Amishunati in 2040. And that's basically looking at by 2040, um, we would have eradicate, eradicated poverty and be a predominantly middle-class society. Um, in terms of health, we're looking at um, a... Um, uh, we're, we're looking at 80 years old as the as the the uh, the, the age. Um, so we have these goals, but then we we stop short of making a plan beyond six years, also because 
administrations change every six years. So the plan are basically the strategies, yung discarte, but the goals are there. However, there are sectoral plans that, that go beyond six years. But, you know, I think, Mr. Chairman, we should go beyond six years because six years is too short, diba? Parang, I think dun, dun bumabalik yung problema natin pa ulit-ulit kasi nga ang, ang iksi lang no, uh, planning natin, eh, diba? Yung wala tayo, yung itong ambition 2040, for example, for the labor market, what was the ambition for 2040? Well, basically the goal is to is to have ano to, to to basically have everybody employed um um and and increase the quality of employment um in 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 o, o, over the, the 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 25 years siguro cite lang another example mr chairman kasi kanina nabanggit ni sec toots yung o, OFW na kababayan natin na namatay sa Kuwait Kuwait di ba so like long term wise ano bang vision natin na in 10 years, in 15 years, hindi na ba tayo magpapadala ng domestic helpers? Kasi di ba, paulit, parang every every year na lang, lagi tayo may kababayan, lalo mga kababaihan na nagiging ganito yung nasasapit nila. So, what, may long-term plan pa tayo na eventually uh, wala na domestic helpers na uh, napadala natin abroad dahil paulit-ulit nga yung abuso sa kanila yung nangyayari. Um, kung six years lang, uh, I don't think ma-achieve natin yung goal natin to kung na hindi na nga tayo magpapadala ng domestic helpers. Assuming na yun yung long-term vision natin. Mr. Chairman. I, 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 Mr. Mr. Chair and um, um, your honors, um, I, I, we, we will take that into consideration in terms of, again, um, bridging eight, the six-year plan um, to the 25-year to the vision um if if we um ideally um again the 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 milestones uh for these goals are clearly articulated um across let's say as we have now 17 years lang titira. so in the next 17 years ano yung to to um make make the the articulation more granular yeah Toots na yung mga counterparts sa bilateral meetings, handa sila. Siguro yung kakulangan din natin is, kasi nga, short term nga yung vision natin at walang pang long term. Yun lang pa, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Yusek, are you done with your... No, I, I just have um, just four short um, items. Um, second is that um, we, um, we suggest to include other social protection schemes like feel help pag-ibig among others and the financial literacy program, not just social security system benefits as part of the measures in the NAAP. So it's very, ano na, ano lang eh, um, social security system benefits lang. The third, I mean, the, the third would be to ensure that the funds, makas IRR na po ito, Mr. Chair, Ensure that the functions of the Interagency Council for Jobs and Investments will not overlap or duplicate with the Interagency Investment Promotion Coordinating Committee created through RA 11647. And finally, we suggest to include in the IAC the Commission on Higher Education and the Department of Education to align education and training with employment needs and the Department of Science and Technology for research and development. Thank you. Thank you, Yusek uh, Abad Santos. Uh, let me also uh, put on record my, uh, my, uh, my uh, support to what uh, Senator Nancy Binay was uh, uh, echoing a while ago. And that is the main reason why we place under uh, the DMW Act a sunset provision and a uh, every 10 year um, um, assessment as to where we are and what uh, we should be doing because of the fact that uh, it is not a state policy for us to uh, promote uh, or force or encourage our workforce to work abroad and uh, perhaps it's a good time to to 
for all of us to be reminded of what Senator Nancy is uh, talking about, that uh, in passing this particular measure, we don't just look at the next six years uh, of this administration, but uh, maging dynamic po ito at uh, makita natin, anticipate natin yung mga possible scenarios and uh, prepare ourselves, our government, uh, especially our people. Uh, next is our uh, representative from the Department of uh, Budget and Management, uh, Yusek uh, Klasara. Ma'am, you're recognized, Morning, please. Po. Thank you. Uh, Morning. Sir, the DBM position was uh, signed by Secretary Mina in her letter uh, to the chairperson dated uh, January 20. So if I may uh, read some of the pertinent uh, comments of the please, DBM. Please. So we, we recognize the objective of the bill to institutionalize and expand the nurse to become the, the National Employment Action Plan of the government, which shall be the Employment Recovery and Generation Master Plan of the country. We likewise support the reconstitution of the Nurse Task Force to an interagency council for jobs and investments. With the establishment of the EAC, government agencies and instrumentalities concerned could align and harmonize the respective efforts related to the matter. Nevertheless, the possibility of the uh, inclusion of the DSWD and the DILG being former members of the Nurse Task Force may be looked into as a composition of the EAC. Considering the proposed functions of the EAC under the bill, uh, such as the uh, harmonization of the employment, livelihood, and training programs and projects of the national government towards preservation and creation of more jobs. Uh, likewise, uh, one of its aim is to collaborate with LGUs uh, in planning, devising, and implementing employment recovery and job generation programs within their localities to ensure alignment with the NEP. As to the uh, Secretariat of the IAC, we concur with the provision of the bill that the existing personnel of the Department of Labor and Employment shall serve as the Secretariat to provide the necessary administrative, uh, operational, and technical support to the IAC. We likewise support the establishment of the technical working groups to support the IAC in the implementation of the NEP. To limit the operational cost, for the purpose within the, the provision of the administrative, logistical, and technical secretariat services of the TWD of the IAC should be handled and undertaken by the organic personnel of DOLE. Hence, the creation of additional position is deemed not necessary. As to regards to the funding, as to regards to the funding requirements for the implementation of the act. It is noted that the bill has no appropriation provision. So accordingly, the usual appropriations language may be considered for adoption in the proposed legislative measure as follows. The amount needed for the initial implementation of this act shall be charged against the current year's appropriations of the departments and agencies, and thereafter such sums as may be necessary for the continued implementation of this act shall be included in the annual GAA. So in sum, uh, we interpose, sir, uh, no objection to the proposed legislative me measure subject to the above-mentioned comments and inputs of the other appropriate agencies with functional jurisdiction on the matter. That's all. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Yusek. We love you. Senator Nancy is... Uh... Si Chairman, gusto ko lang sabihin na parang pwede ba si Yusek lagi ang ating resource person? Kasi ngayon ko lang narinig yung DBM na sila pa yung nagsuggest na bigyan ng funding Diba? First time, usually, laging ang, ang language is, uh, ano yan, kung may uh, ex, ano yan, uh, existing lunch. funds or may available funds, but ngayon napansin nila na walang funding requirements at nanggaling na sa kanila mismo na pwedeng lagyan. Diyan lang po on the funding provision. <laughs> Baka mabawi namin yung we love you, you say. Maraming salamat po. And uh, we proceed now with the Department of Trade and Industry. We have with us uh, Yusek uh, Al Aldaba. Ma'am, you have the floor. And uh, to, uh, for the information of the body, ang DTI and DOLE, uh, co-chair po sila nitong uh, National Employment Recovery Strategy. You have the floor, ma'am. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chair and uh, Senator Nancy and uh, to all our co-workers from the government. Um, just like the previous uh, speakers, Mr. Chair, the Department of Trade and Industry fully supports 
the objectives of the bill to institutionalize the National Employment Recovery Strategy or NERS, which was uh, established in 2021 under EO number 140 and expand it to the National Employment Action Plan, which will serve as the country's employment recovery and master plan. The underlying framework of the bill focuses on the relationship between skills development, investments, and jobs. The relationship highlights the importance of human resource development and building the capacity of our workforce. Highly skilled workers are significant determinants of investments, which also drives the positive relationship between jobs and investments, meaning the higher the level of investments flow into a country, the greater the number of jobs uh, created. And for this relationship to work in an effective manner, strong collaboration between and among government and industry is necessary. As the bill correctly pointed out, a whole of society approach is a must. The establishment of the Interagency Council for Jobs and Investment as platform to strengthen the collaboration and cooperation between and among DTI, DOLE, and TESDA is crucial in integrating the efforts of government and industry as we build a market environment that stimulates economic recovery, growth, and development by linking investment incentives with uh, decent employment, provides comprehensive support and incentives to businesses, especially to uh, MSMEs, and uh, promotes the employability, competitiveness, and productivity of workers through skills development and enhancement programs and ensures the security and preservation of employment. Mr. Chair, the formulation of the National Employment Action Plan or roadmap is clearly one of the major initial steps needed to implement the law. And we would like to suggest that apart from the conduct of a comprehensive analysis of the employment and labor market situation, as indicated in the bill, Equally important is the need to evaluate our technical vocational education and skills development system in order for us to fully address the recovery of the labor market and the country's employment issues, such as the following. One, how to effectively solve our perennial problem of job skills mismatch. Two, how to prepare the workforce for the jobs of the future, uh, especially with the entry of new technologies arising from the fourth industrial revolution, which uh, was also pointed out by the chair during his introduction, and how to ensure that the skills and competencies demanded by industries in the future will be sufficiently provided. A comprehensive assessment of our vocational education, training, and skills development system is uh, crucial in formulating ways to deliver skilled workers for a more competitive economy, and which is vital for us to achieve the three goals of the NIAP. We would also want to highlight the need for reforms that would gear our system toward the adoption of a skills-based approach. Our system of learning and signaling job fit should provide the agility that lifelong learners will require. Complementing our Philippine qualifications framework with a skills-based system will not only provide more efficient mechanisms by which employers can identify the talent they need for businesses to flourish, but can also create fairer labor markets where individuals are able to rapidly transition between roles, have greater access to learning opportunities, and be matched to employment through unbiased and skills-based evaluation. DTI, together with nine other government agencies, DOLE, TESDA, CHED, DEPED, DA, DICT, DOST, the Professional Regulation Commission, and uh, the Department of Tourism, signed an MOU in 2022 to implement the Philippine Skills Framework, or PSF, benchmarking with uh, Singapore and through the support of Skills Future Singapore, or SSG, this is the government agency in charge of implementing Singapore's uh, skills framework. This initiative aims to prepare the workforce for the jobs of the future and provide the necessary foundation for workers' careers and build further skills and knowledge 
to allow the workers to participate in new and changing industries. It is important to integrate the Philippine Qualifications Framework with the Philippine Skills Framework, uh, or PSF. The latter, or PSF, serves as a common reference or language that employers and workers share in order to ensure the match between jobs and skills. The skills framework describes the skills, knowledge, and competencies required in different jobs. It also provides sectoral information, occupations, jobs, and roles, skills description, career pathways, and training programs needed. Using the skills framework, employers can identify the necessary skills and competencies while job seekers are able to define ways forward or upward in a particular industry. For educational institutions, the framework is used to revise existing curricula and design new courses to bridge the skills and competencies of the workers as they uh, upgrade to desired occupations. The priority sectors for the development of the skills frameworks include include uh, manufacturing, construction, logistics and supply chain, health and wellness, food and agriculture, creative economy, tourism, and ITBPM. Mr. Chair, we also note the recent approval of uh, Republic Act 1192-71, known as Philippine Digital Workforce Competitiveness Act, which must be taken into consideration in the crafting of uh, the present bill. RA 1192-71 also aims to enhance the skills and competitiveness of the Philippine workforce in human digital technology and innovations and provide the necessary infrastructure to ensure that all Filipino workers have access to digital skills and competencies that are at par with global standards and in collaboration with the private sector provide upskilling, reskilling, and training of the Filipino workforce on digital technology and innovations for employability and competitiveness in the fourth industrial revolution. An interagency council for development and competitiveness of Philippine digital workforce will uh, be established, and this is going to be chaired by NEDA, and shall be composed of DOLE, DTI, TESDA, DICT, DOST, DILG, and CHED. The proposed Interagency Council for Jobs and Investment and the Interagency Council for Development and Competitiveness of Philippine Digital Workforce should coordinate closely, align and harmonize their functions and responsibilities to promote the employability and competitiveness of uh, workers. And um, Secretary, uh, Secretary Fred also indicated that there should be only one interagency council for jobs in all sectors. The interagency council on digital workforce uh, could probably be folded into the one under NIAP. And apart from TESDA, uh, I, I think this was also suggested by NEDA, CHED should be part of the council to ensure that the whole post-secondary educational system is geared to preparing students for emerging and future skills. There is a need to overhaul the post-secondary educational system to capacitate it for skilling, reskilling, and upskilling our workforce. And the usual four-year college degree programs will need to give way to a micro-credentialing system. Apart from the provision for support secretariat to the council, we uh, also uh, suggest that uh, there, there be uh, sufficient funding for the council's operations. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Yusek. And uh, before we continue, let us acknowledge, let me acknowledge our uh, Deputy Majority Leader, uh, the hardworking uh, Senator from uh, City of San Juan, Senator J.V. Ejercito, my bandmate. Maraming kakanta. Thank you, Senator J.V., for being here. Thank you, Yusek Aldaba, uh, if you want to. Thank you, Yusek Aldaba, especially for... Uh, uh, crystallizing our uh, a whole of society approach and also for mentioning the 
bill that I uh, sponsored and defended that became a law, the Philippine Qualifications Framework. Perhaps I would just ask uh, one question uh, right away when you, when you made mention the uh, DTI's uh, skills uh, framework. How, how do we reconcile and harmonize ito pong uh, DTI skills framework? Meron din po ang uh, TESDA na National Technical Education and Skills Development Plan. Meron din po ang DOLE, uh, Labor and Employment Plan. Meron din po ang NEDA, na Philippine Development Plan. And as you mentioned earlier, uh, sa Philippine Qualifications sa Framework, may provision po dyan. Uh, under uh, this RA 10968 to further strengthen uh, the government's uh, job generation efforts. Uh, baka pwedeng bigyan niyo po kami and uh, siguro yung others who would uh, uh, speak in a while ang TESDA and uh, DOLE. Pa paano ba natin to mare-reconcile and uh, harmonize? Kasi yung mga councils ngayon parang more of ad hoc ano sila eh. Hindi naman siya na-institutionalized pa. Uh, so, what, what can you say about this, uh, Yusek? Uh, yung existing po natin ngayon, Mr. Chair, yung Philippine Qualifications Framework, nakafocus po siya sa mga uh, qualification levels. I, I, I know standards. that I authored the law. <laughs> yes, sir. Ang problema uh, din din, uh, Yusek, no? Dun sa PQF uh, NCC, nung mga nakaraang panahon, Kaya sabi ni Senator Nancy, baka dapat sabihin natin dyan, every two months, three months, mag-meet itong council. Kasi yung PQFNCC, uh, yung budget hearing na lang sila nag-meet. <laughs> so once a year. And uh, we were so surprised about it that they, 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 they couldn't come up of, 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 of something. No? Uh, kami nila Senator Wynn, Senator uh, Sani Angara, Senator Nancy. Every budget hearing na lang natatanong namin, nag-meeting na ba kayo? Parang ah, nagtitingin na lang sila, no? Parang so buti na lang may budget hearing para mag-meet kayo, nasama-sama kayo, no? Uh, just to give you an example and 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 that's what happened, no? Uh, before, that's why tayo ngayon every now and then we continue to push them to see each other and uh, you know, when you want to uh, synergize our efforts, you you really have to meet. <laughs> yes, Mr. Ma Chair. So essentially po yung uh the PQF, uh, ang focus po niya is uh, on the supply side. Um, samantalang yung uh, Philippine Skills Framework, nakafocus po siya sa demand side, yung mga industry. So, para po mas uh, efficient yung ating buong system, ang proposal po namin, i-integrate po yung dalawa. Uh, that's why we, we are also suggesting, uh, Mr. Chair, if we could amend yung existing PQF para po pagsamahin na natin uh, sila ng PSF. And ito rin po yung uh, same system uh, na, nasa, na, gina, na um, ini implement in other countries apart from Singapore, Australia, ganun, ganun din po yung uh, system as well as in many other countries. Pero sa atin po... Uh, Sana, Mr. Chair. Ma, Augmented. Ma, yes, Mr. Chair. Me, medyo kailangan po nating isaayos. Uh, and siguro po kung uh, mapagsasama natin sa equation yung both, yung supply at saka yung demand. And, and we're only talking about the DTI's efforts. What about, of course, you have the Dole's uh, uh, Labor and Employment Plan. Opo, kasama Mer po namin sila. Mr. Yeah, meron din uh, Philippine Development Plan. Yes, meron po. din... Uh, Ito, yung sa TESDA, yung National uh, uh, Technical Education Skills Development Plan. Aligned naman po lahat, uh, yeah. Mr. Chair, including uh, ang PDP po natin reflected, uh, we were able to uh, reflect the PSF as well dun po sa mga chapters na uh, under DTI, uh, sa industry at, and, uh, and services. Um, meron din po kaming mga industry roadmaps and uh, yun po, hindi lang six years, uh, but uh, they go beyond uh, 20, 20 years, so meron po siyang uh, um, ano, um, parang short, medium, and long term. And uh, nire-review po yun annually, we work together with the industries. And ngayon po, uh, itinadagdag namin na uh, chapters dun sa mga roadmaps yung uh, kahalagahan ng paghahanda sa fourth industrial revolution. 
by uh, yun nga po, identifying kung ano yung mga skills and competencies na kinakailangan ng ating mga workers para po ma-sustain yung competitiveness natin. And ultimately naman po, alam naman nating lahat, we need to industrialize in order for us to address po yung poverty and uh, kailangan po yung growth talaga maging inclusive and uh, sustainable. And nakadugtong din po dito sa roadmaps yung Philippine Skills Framework, Mr. Chair. Binanggit ko po kanina yung 10 industries that we are prioritizing. May, dalaw may uh, three uh, skills frameworks na po kami na natapos covering uh, game development, digital animation, and uh, supply chain and logistics. And uh, kasama po namin dito sa effort na to, yung ibang mga government agencies and pinaghahati-hatian po namin yung pag-fund dun sa pag-craft uh, ng uh, mga skills frameworks because right now, MOU lang po yung ginagamit namin so wala po kaming mga budget. So kanya-kanya po kaming hanap ng resources in or just, just so we'll really be able to come up with the skills frameworks. And um, nung marinig po ito ng mga tiga-industriya, kaagad, Mr. Chair, they uh, supported the initiative because sila rin po, yun yung kanilang direction in terms of how best uh, we can all work together to address ito nga pong job skills mismatch, including yung preparations that we need as uh, new technologies are already entering uh, uh, the country and at the same time, talaga pong madi-displace yung mga workforce, especially yung mga routine, yung mga ganun pong klase, manual na trabaho. In the future, madi-displace po sila. And hence, it's really important. Kaya po itong batas po ninyo na um, kinraft talaga pong kailangan-kailangan natin, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Yusek. No, uh, I cannot help but uh, first of all, emphasize the importance of uh, um, partnering with the industries. And uh, I remember when we were at the helm of uh, uh, Technical Education Skills Development Authority, we came up with the program of uh, industry-led uh, 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 training regulations. And uh, in order for us to develop itong mga training regulations na implement ng TESDA. But you were mentioning, uh, I just cannot help but notice yung binanggit po ninyo, you came up with a program or is this a training regulation kind of thing not, uh, about gaming you made mention a while ago? Hindi, hindi, po, naman. hindi po, Mr. Chair. Uh, makikita po dun sa skills frameworks lahat po ng occupations okay. in the in the okay. industry. I, I got it now. I got it now. Because I, I was thinking if you are also developing a, 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 a training program, that's a duplication of what Tess is doing. Hindi yeah. po, Mr. Uh -huh. Chair. But, yun... but you're right. You're right. Because uh, in order for you to be an effective uh, agency looking and uh, studying the skills requirement of the industry, kailangan kasama sila. And uh, that's, yes, a good, uh, that's a good thing that you're doing. Thank you. Nakitest na po yung mga, uh -huh. after po na matapos, binibigay po mm. namin kay TESDA and kay CHED. Yes. Ngayon po nire-review nila yung tatlo yeah. uh, and ina-identify yung mga uh, trainings na kinakailangan yes. in order for us. Yes, and the training regulations being uh, evaluated every three years, uh, it's still it's still uh, ongoing. Ganon, no? Yung pa rin ang kalakaran. Sige, maraming salamat. Before we go with to TESDA, let's let's go to the mother uh, department of TESDA, which is DOLE. Let's uh, acknowledge si uh, Yusek Torres, ma'am. Uh, you have the floor. Thank, Thank you, you for being here. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, uh, Senator Binay, and Senator Hersito, and colleagues uh, from government. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Uh, I would like to express our support, uh, Department of Labor and Employment support to the bill and we commend the Senate bill as sponsored by the good senator. We support the bill as timely, relevant, and consistent with our country's direction as the Philippines seeks to accelerate reforms beyond pandemic recovery with focus on creating quality, productive, and decent employment. In fact, we would also like to propose the to um, um, uh, revise the naming of the act as an act institutionalizing a job creation action plan as a way of accelerating beyond pandemic recovery. 
This is also very much in line with the department's contribution to the Philippine Development Plan 2023 to 2028, particularly the chapter four on increasing income earning ability, which is divided into two strategies, employability increased and access to employment opportunities expanded. Particularly on employability increased, we emphasize the strategy on strengthening government private partnership to job creation and which this bill very much uh, supports. It also looks into increasing awareness and the collaboration between the Philippine Qualifications Framework and the Philippine Skills Framework. It also intensifies participation on youth employability programs. In particular, access to employment opportunities expanded will basically integrate and strengthen all employment facilitation services that will help promote the job creation. It will also anticipate skills needs in terms of looking into priority sectors. And already the bill mentions um, six priority sectors, which we are in full support, including four, uh, uh, four additional sectors, which we consider as em uh, em uh, employment growth sectors. And these employment growth sectors, we have identified the in-demand skills, the critical skills, and emerging occupations to which we need really to project and forecast uh, on a timely basis to be able to prepare the labor market, particularly in uh, education, skills training, and also higher education. We also, uh, the bill is also very much in line with the formulation of the labor and employment plan. 2023 to 28, targeted to be released by May 2023. And we propose that the PDP and the LEP be the overarching frameworks to which the National Employment Action Plan, or we propose also a job creation plan, basically because it contributes to the creation of employment, both from the public and the private sectors. It's not only just from the government. We support the proposal of the Interagency Council for Jobs and Investments. However, considering the size of the organization and the depth of the technical inputs that may need to be collected from the various industries, we recommend that the representatives be increased, two for the employer uh, representatives and two for the labor representatives to be able to uh, maximize their participation and contribution to the Interagency Council. And of course, uh, I would also support uh, representation from the migrant workers. The DOLE recognizes the important role of the co-chair and the secretariat. As stated, we understand the intention of the bill in identifying multiple chairpersons, but may we understand also the roles and limitations of the chair and the co-chair as the current version of the bill does not define the same. For section seven in particular, we propose to focus, as I mentioned earlier, on the 10 key employment growth sectors, namely agriculture, health, tourism, manufacturing, transportation and logistics, information and communications technology, education, creative industries, energy and construction. And may in inform uh, the chair that the Dole and TESDA has been collaborating and working with the PIDS on a forecasting methodology to be able to identify the critical occupations for this key employment growth sectors. For Section 8, we note the important role of the LGUs in job creation. As a point, however, we may also raise that the LGUs, in coordination with the regional development councils, shall craft regional or local employment action plans aligned with the NEAP or the job creation plan. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Yusek Torres. Uh, we now call on the uh, representative of uh, TESDA, our uh, DDG, uh, Tonisito uh, Omali. Sir, you're recognized. Yeah. You have the floor. Magandang uh, umaga po sa inyo, Senator Joel, uh, Senators Nancy, Senator J uh, JV po. Uh, magandang uh, umaga po sa ating lahat. Uh, the agency expresses its full support to the proposed institutionalization and expansion of the National Employment Recovery Strategy 
into a National Employment Action Plan to become the country's master plan for employment recovery and generation. Ang uh, TESDA po ay uh, buong-buong sumusuporta po sa lahat ng provision ng uh, atin pong panukalang batas. And if you may, Mr. Chair, we would like to mention specifically uh, the provisions that are relevant to uh, TESDA, the Section 4B at page 2, lines 2 to 5, and then uh, lines 21 to 28 also at page 2, of Senate Bill 129, uh, talking about promoting the employability, competitiveness through efficient and effective delivery of skills development and enhancement programs, and uh, lines 21 to 28, talking about equipping our unskilled workforce. And then it mentioned, Mr. Chair, some uh, targeted sectors, youth and women, uh, uh, again, uh, of the unskilled workforce, and uh, that uh, provision underlines 24 to 28 of uh, encouraging and incentivizing employers, uh, including industry uh, stakeholders that uh, provide uh, activities geared toward the improvement of the workforce. All of these provisions, Mr. Chair, if you may, are very faithful to sections 2 declaration of policy sections batas niyo po lahat ito Mr. Chair so binabagit ko lang po Mr. Chair para lang po maidiin kung bakit po talaga buong buo po ang suporta uh, na nais pong ipahayag ng ating uh, Director General Danilo Cruz po sa inyong panukalang batas section 3 uh, enumeration of section, uh, uh, of objectives and if I may also mention Mr. Chair section uh, uh, 21 of RA 7796 TESDA Act of 1994 na doon po nakapalaw this third chair na binigyan po ng mandato ang TESDA na bumuo po nung tinatawag nga po ninyong National Technical Education and Skills Development Plan. Uh, nais ko po siguro pong banggitin na mayroon pong TESDA Circular Number 40 Series of 2022, Mr. Chair, in relation to the mandate that we give some uh, uh, skills development training and activities to the unskilled workforce. Uh, doon po tinukoy ang uh, mga tinatawag po natin, Mr. Chair, as you very well know, na special clients. Nandu doon po ang uh, kabataan, ang kababaihan, ang ating OFWs, at uh, ang atin pong uh, kalihim ng atin pong dole, si Benny Laguesma, kasama po ng ating uh, TESDA Director General Danilo Cruz at tulad po ng nabanggit po ni Yusek uh, Amy po ay naguugnayan para po lalo pong mapalakas yung training programs po, skills development ng TESDA, particularly uh, yung atin pong uh, apprenticeship and dual training system programs and other employment-based training or rather uh, enterprise-based training uh, modalities, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, yung nabanggit po ninyo kanina, Mr. Chair, na nais po natin particular na palakasin ang pakikipag-ugnayan po ng uh, industriya. Tama po yun, Mr. Chair. Ito po ay uh, buhay na buhay. Uh, at uh, again, sa pakikipag-ugnayan po sa ating mother agency uh, with our USEC uh, Amy, ang uh, pagbubuo po ng uh, industry boards. Uh, sa mga ilang uh, priority sectors under Section 26 of RA 7796, talaga pong uh, buong pinapatupad po ng uh, ating uh, ahensya ng TESDA ito at uh, yung mga uh, in relation to this uh, TESDA Circular Number 77 Series of 2021, Mr. Chair, was uh, also issued uh, at dun po tulad ng nabanggit yung Mr. Chair, uh, yun po yung layunin ng Section 26 ng RA 7796 na ay ma-involve nga po ang industriya para malaman at matuko yung tunay na skills and competencies na kinakailangan nila at kung paano po dapat ituro to in the process of developing our training regulations. In the technical uh, National Technical Education Skills Development Plan, Mr. Chair, uh, sinasabi ko lamang po, mayroon pong uh, natukoy po doon ng mga priority sectors. Ina-adjust po ito ngayon, uh, ina-update, uh, sa gabay po ng ating uh, Sec. Benny at uh, ni uh, Director General uh, Dan, uh, Dan Cruz 
uh, para po mas tumugon po ito sa pangangailangan at kung ano po yung direksyon na nais kong ibigay uh, ng ating uh, Pangulo. Uh, yun po lamang, Mr. Chair, at nagbigay na po kami ng uh, ng advance copy, Mr. Chair. Uh, Ilalagdaan na lamang po ng aming uh, DG uh, yung official na position paper together with some uh, additional data and information na maaari pong makatulong po sa uh, panukalang batas ito. Maraming pong salamat, Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Yusek uh, Umali, DDG Umali, and uh, I think it's important to note and uh, commend yung test uh, for uh, having um, partnerships with the private sector. Yung list na binigay sa atin is about 187 partnerships, uh, which is very important. And uh, isa yan sa binabantayan natin kasi kung wala tayong uh, kapartner na industriya, hindi natin masisiguro na tama yung uh, ginagawa nating mga training regulations or implementation of our uh, uh, TRs. It's also important to note, no? uh, looking at the, for example, ng PQF, merong council, ang uh, Innovation Council, meron din yung sa create itong Philippine Creative Industries Act Council. Ang dami na po eh. Uh, ang importante talaga dito, masinergize natin eh. No? Uh, ihingi kami ng tulong sa inyo, papaano nating uh, masisiguro na episyente ito at uh, gumagalaw higit sa lahat. Uh, may accountability rin para makita natin yung uh, uh, fruits of the labor nitong uh, mga council na ginagawa po natin. Senator Nancy. Sig siguro, Mr. Chairman, for submission na lang, can the different agencies submit to the committee yung mga membership nila sa councils and kung ilang beses sila nagmi-meet at kung ilang beses sila nakaka-attend sa mga meeting? Yun lang po, Mr. Chairman. Sige. Uh, please take note of that, uh, mga resource persons natin. We go with the Department of Education now, and uh, DepEd is being represented by Yusek De Castro, sir. Thank you for being here. You have the floor, sir. Yes, magandang umaga po, uh, Honorable Chair, uh, Senator uh, Joe Villanueva, and of course, uh, Honorable Senators J.B. Ejercito and uh, Senator Nancy Pinay. First of all, I'd like to thank you for inviting us to participate uh, in these proceedings, Pa. So, uh, the DepEd position paper is already being finalized, Sir Chair, and uh, it's for submission within the day, Pa. And um, if, if uh, with your honor's kind indulgence, I, I can read from uh, our position paper, Pa. Please, please proceed. Thank you. So, uh, we join the the MW, the uh, DOF, NEDA, DOLET, and the rest of the agencies present in expressing our support for this proposed measure. Uh, in line with the goal of poverty reduction through decent employment, the Department of Education fully supports the said bill as it proposes the country's employment recovery and generation of the master plan which will stimulate the national and local economic growth and development of the country. The objectives and the provisions articulated in the bill are certainly consistent with the Department of Education's goal of producing functionally literate and holistically developed learners who are ready to face the challenges and demands of the rapidly changing society. So, we have uh, some comments from the different strands of uh, the Department of Education uh, in relation to Section 5 on the Interagency Council. Um, it is respectfully recommended that the addition of the Departments of Interior and Local Government and the Department of Social Welfare and Development as members be considered. Uh, the inclusion of uh, the DILG is recommended considering that local government units will play a crucial role in the localization of the National Employment Action Plan through the formulation of plans, programs, and projects towards employment recovery and job generation within their respective jurisdictions. And likewise, the Social Welfare and Development Department is respectfully recommended to be added since it is mandated by law 
to develop, administer, and implement comprehensive social welfare programs that are designed to uplift the living conditions and empower the disadvantaged children, youth, women, older persons, persons with disabilities, and families in crisis or at risk, and also the communities needing assistance. Um, we also recommend that the uh, provision uh, we, we join the Department of Budget and Management in recommending that a provision on appropriations be included to ensure the proper allotment of funds for an implementation of the law. Uh, we also recommend to add a specific provision on monitoring and evaluation in order to assess the implementation progress and effectiveness of the NERS. This will likewise show and reflect the areas which will need instantaneous response or action in order to immediately address uh, implementation concerns. From our planning and programming division, um, their comments relate to section five of the proposed bill on the composition of the IAC. One of the promises of the K-12 is that by the end of basic education, our graduates are already job ready. In turn, the DepEd included, as part of its monitoring, the number of graduates who pursue A, higher education, B, middle-level skills development, C, entrepreneurship, and D, employment. With this inclusion of the Department of Education as a member of the IAC, it would be beneficial for the implementation of the proposed measure, particularly in drafting the National Employment Action Plan. This will also help the Department of Education to fine tune its existing policies and uh, the senior high school course offerings aligned to the current employment situation and labor market. From our curriculum and teaching strand, uh, they have comments on section four of the bill, specifically on the objectives of the NEAP, which provides to promote the employability, competitiveness, wellness, and productivity of workers through efficient and effective delivery of skills development and enhancement programs and maximization of opportunities in the labor market in a post-COVID-19 world. The DepEd supports this objective as the K-12 curriculum focuses on the development of competencies and skills for the graduates to be job ready in the world of work. The Education Pantahanan at Pangkabuhayan and the Technology and Livelihood Education Curricula, in particular, zero in on the development of soft and hard skills, as these skills are very relevant whether the graduate decides to pursue higher education, employment, entrepreneurship, or middle-level skills. On the clear action components, success measures, and performance indicators of the NEAP, on the other hand, which provides identifying priority sectors, key and emerging industries, and other areas with high employment potential for purposes of encouraging domestic investment and foreign direct investment in such sectors, implementing targeted support and subsidy to volatile sectors, and providing support to create value-added supply chain. The National Tracer Study on the Senior High School Graduates, or SHS graduates, in school year 2017 and 2019, conducted by our uh, Bureau of Curriculum Development, revealed that upon their graduation, 10% were immediately employed, around 7% of whom pursued the technical, vocational, and livelihood track, and 3% were academic track graduates. Nearly 1% of them are engaged in entrepreneurship. As part of the Department of Education's efforts to ensure that Filipino learners are equipped with capacities and skills relevant to the needs of the community, the department released Department Order Number 54, Series of 2022, the guidelines on the selection of senior high school technical, vocational, and livelihood specializations in December 29, 2022. These guidelines aim to institutionalize the steps to be undertaken by the school's division offices and the TVL SHS institutions to identify which specializations to offer. It, it underscores that the specializations must be in sync with the learner's preference, 
the capacity of the schools division office and the schools and the local and national development. In the process of rationalizing the TVL specializations, the skills and specializations essential to the labor force shall be distinguished and the qualifications of the TVL track graduates shall be aligned with the national and international frameworks, consequently increasing employment opportunities. The findings of the National Tracer Study reflected that the economic status of our learners had an overwhelming impact on the choice of whether to pursue employment after graduation or to continue with their studies. This is followed by the aspiration of the learners to be able to support their family immediately and save enough in order to continue their education in the future. So in response to, it, to this, the Department of Education issued work immersion policies and guidelines to provide basis for the implementation of work immersion in all HSS. As it can be uh, conducted in various ways, depending on the training needs of the learners and the relevance to the employment opportunities at hand, especially in uh, several industries in the private sector. Okay. 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 So uh, with that, um, we recommend that there be an insertion of a phrase in section four. Um, for inclusion of work immersion of senior high school students as part of encouraging and incentivizing employers and other private sector organizations. Okay. Uh, Your Honor, we undertake to provide further inputs and data needed from DepEd and to participate actively in this collective effort. DepEd believes that the, with the legislation, the social and economic issues due to the pandemic and challenges and opportunities brought about by new technologies will be proactively addressed. And this will surely benefit uh, the Filipino people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that, uh, Yusek. Uh, we have been talking about uh, the, uh, the uh, assessment of uh, K-12 to uh, program. And uh, you made mention a while ago about uh, the uh, thrust of the department na job ready sila after uh, K-12. But you also mentioned, and uh, we, we just wanted to be clarified on this, only 10% are actually uh, being employed. Is that correct? That research study on that. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, actually, it's based on our national tracer study for 2017 and 2018. So that's your, your thrust is job ready. 10% lang yung employed, 90% um, ay hindi. So 90%? Yes. Uh, 83% po went to college po. 83% yes. went to college. And then 10% uh, landed a job. Employment po. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, I, I would like to uh, raise this particular uh uh report coming from uh, the Asian Development Bank. In 2019, uh, in a 2019 sector assessment of the ADB, the institution noted that uh, uh, yung, yung how, how delays and uncertainties affect the uh, school-to-work transition of our uh, laborers. The ADB stated that on average, a higher school graduate will take four years to find permanent wage jobs while it takes two years for a college uh, graduate. Um, may we know um, if this is on your radar and parang it, it, it shows na parang may kulang pa sa ating uh, educational system. No? And I'm not just talking about uh, DepEd, but also TESDA and CHED. Um, itong uh, assessment na ito na ginawa ng uh, ADB. Sir, Your Honor. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Actually, uh, it's also in our radar, sir, which is why we are uh, doing programs uh, aimed at improving specialization subjects, and uh, which is also why we are supportive of this measure, sir, because um, I believe it will provide a good venue for our alignments and for uh, cutting down that delay in terms of uh, the employment.
Sige po, thank you. I think uh, it's very important to note itong uh, ADB uh, uh, sector assessment. Anyway, um, sige, Senator Nancy. Sige, Mr. Chairman, meron ba kayo ano, parang goal na percentage na after grade 12, ito yung percentage na magtatrabaho na, ito yung percentage na uh, would pursue or would go to college. Meron ba kayong ganong um, standard or goal? Well, planning. Uh, Ma'am, actually, it's part of our planning. Pero po, it's highly variable because it really depends on the choice of the child po, whether to continue with uh, college po or to uh, go for this option of going straight to work from senior high school. What we're uh, focusing on is really capacitating them po. So parang wala kayo na, parang for um, next school year, um, sana yung graduate sa grade to 12, parang 30% of them would uh, go to work and not go to college. Walang, walang ganong okay. targets. Oh. Ma'am, um, I will discuss po with our curriculum and then uh, teaching strand po. And then uh, we undertake to provide that data pag ano po, pagkakuha po namin. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Kasi di ba, pag hindi na sila nag-pursue ng college, dadagdag to dun sa labor force natin, di ba? So kailangan din pag paghandaan eh. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Senator uh, Binay. Let's proceed with the uh, three more agencies no? before we uh, 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 ask uh, questions to these agencies. DSWD, uh, represented by uh, ASEC uh, Palarcuna. Ma'am, uh, you have the floor and thank you for being here. Uh, thank you so much po, uh, Senator Joel Villanueva. And to uh, Senator Nancy Binay and to Senator uh, Ejercito, on behalf of uh, the DSWD, officer in charge, uh, Undersecretary Edo Punay, we would like to extend our support to Senate Bill 129 or an act institutionalizing and expanding the national employment recovery strategies to a national employment action plan and for other purposes that clearly defines the importance of institutionalizing and expanding the national recovery strategy to a national employment action plan to address the social and economic issues the Philippines had experienced due to the 2020 COVID pandemic. We commend also the author of the bill, uh, Senator Villanueva, for his genuine concern in promoting the quality of life of the Filipino people, especially in times of and after the onset of calamities or disasters, whether natural or man-made. The department also suggests to prioritize the out-of-school youth, women in the informal sector, and graduates of grade 12 in the provision of skills training to build their personal and economic development. This program may be also in coordination with the uh, uh, test. And uh, Mr. Chair, to further enhance the bills and resolution, we recommend and we join uh, the DMW that in on Section 3 uh, coverage to cover also the overseas Filipino workers in the National Employment Recovery Strategies. And we recommend also on Section 4, National Employment Action Plan, and uh, to be more inclusive the bill to be more inclusive, uh, paragraph 2, letter B, to include other sectors such as the young and able persons with disability. Uh, we acknowledge that the bill should be a disability inclusive. And indigenous people, which also need to be given the chance to be trained in order to be competitive and employable to gain their own income or possibly establish their own enterprise as a source of income. We would like also to recommend under paragraph 2, letter H, to include the PWDs, IPs, who are still capable of working effectively and can be considered part of the workforce or even owners of micro entrepreneurs. Uh, Mr. Chair, allow me also to thank uh, DBM and DepEd who acknowledge 
uh, the importance that the DSWD should be included in the Interagency Council for Jobs and Investment. Uh, we recommend also that the DSWD Sustainable Livelihood Program and other national government agencies programs that already provide capital assistance and skills trainings, as well as the League of Provinces, Cities, and Municipalities. Considering that their insights and experiences in the locality will benefit the improvement of the planning and implementation of the bill. We likewise recommend, Mr. Chair, to include the Cooperative Development Authority, the Overseas Workers' Welfare Administration, the Department of Imperial and Local Government as member of the Interagency Council for Jobs and Investment. In addition, Mr. Chair, the powers of and functions of the IAC to include additional provision harmonizing the different agencies' assistance in relation to employment. For the active participation of LGUs, Mr. Chair, uh, we recommend that the LGU should submit reports to the DILG relative to the status of implementation of the programs and plans under this law. We join also, Mr. Chair, the recommendation of DBM and DepEd on the provision on appropriations and to indicate the agency where the initial funding shall be charged against and the amount necessary for its continued implementation. Mr. Chair, we likewise support uh, and rest assured that in the succeeding TWG meetings about this bill, the DSWD will continue to attend and support this endeavor. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Asek. Uh, para mapabilis tayo, two more. Uh, DILG, represented by uh, Asek uh, uh, Rolando Puno. Sir, you have the floor. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman, your honors. Just a brief statement from the DILG. Uh, the Department of the Interior and Local Government fully supports the measure filed by the chairman. We do recognize the nurse serves as the master plan of the government for the recovery of the labor market through initiatives that encourage the generation of more employment opportunities by improving access to employment, livelihood, and training opportunities. Improve the employability, wellness, and productivity of workers by maximizing opportunities in the labor market under the new normal. And provide support to existing and emerging businesses and security and preservation of employment. In line with this, uh, Mr. Chairman, your honors, the DILG together with, the, uh, with TESDA, DOLE, and the DTI in uh, November of 2021 issued a joint memorandum circular entitled uh, guidelines on the implementation of strengthening initiatives for balanced growth and opportunities at the localities, or CBOL. Uh, the aim of this was to institutionalize a workforce development program uh, at the local government unit level uh, that would enhance capacity to develop a competitive workforce. In line with this also, Mr. Chairman, may we therefore request, given the vital role that the DILG will play in the uh, implementation of this measure, can we request that the DILG be included in the interagency uh, council uh, that will be formed under this measure? Well, we'll leave it at that, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Asik uh, Puno. We also would like to acknowledge and give the floor to uh, the DICT representative, Yusek uh, Sige. Ma'am, you are recognized. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, your honors, uh, good morning to everyone. First of all, thank you, Mr. Chair, for leading this initiative, a much needed uh, policy uh, as we are recovering from the pandemic. The Department of Information and Communications Technology is in full support of your bill. Uh, candidly speaking, Mr. Chair, uh, we have yet to submit our full position paper, but rest assured that uh, we will submit this uh, position paper. But let me just, uh, 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 for the record, already mention some of the vital recommendations. Uh, you see, uh, digitalization and digital skills, Mr. Chair, is very much integrated in our job generation uh, policies uh, today, Mr. Chair. Uh, the, the bill that you are uh, sponsoring is very much aligned with the DICT's vision to help translate connectivity to jobs 
and uh, to digital competitiveness. Uh, it is also aligned with our goal to help translate connectivity to inclusion by ensuring that these digital jobs are dispersed across all the regions and provinces in the Philippines. And uh, to translate uh, connectivity to ease of doing business, uh, because 90% of uh, the uh, business enterprises we have in the Philippines are MSMEs, and they are uh, very much easily the biggest job generator in this country. Uh, so uh, some uh, recommendations, Mr. Chair, uh, about uh, eight or nine of them. Uh, first of all, Mr. Chair, I echo the sentiment of our colleague here about aligning this bill with a very, uh, I would have to say, revolutionary policy that the Philippines have ever passed. And you are the author of that, Republic 11927. And I'm happy to share that all the ICT councils where I am convener of the National ICT Confederation of the Philippines contributed to the crafting of the bill. It is an international declaration that digital skills should not only be limited to students graduating from digital courses, but all across uh, different courses. Even if you're a nurse, even if you're a driver, you should have these digital skills to make the Philippines uh, uh, competitive in the international arena. So I agree that uh, this should be harmonized because RA 11927, Mr. Chair, is actually a linchpin law. Uh, for this country, given that more than 95% of the jobs today actually need digital skills. Secondly, Mr. Chair, uh, may I also most respectfully ask that uh, the law should make mention of tech startups and startups aside from MSMEs, because these are, val these are high value job generators. I have seen uh, in our visits to other countries, a lot of great, really good ideas migrating to other countries just because their government did not support them. And these tech startups have the potential of really migrating and uh, transforming into job generating companies and enterprises. Number three, Mr. Chair, I would like to also respectfully request that the concept of digital innovation and global employment be integrated in the uh, law, Mr. Chair. Uh, several researches show that in terms of global employment, the Philippines is really a first mover. You can be in the mountains of the Cordilleras and work for a company in New York. You can be in Mindanao and work for a company in Europe. That is the concept of global employment. And I believe that the Philippines, as experts say, is really uh, the first mover in this area. So global employment will really increase, be it ITBPM, uh, be it uh, freelancing and gig industry. And on that note, Mr. Chair, I am so inspired when you said you want to generate 1.7 million jobs per year. That is so um, inspiring, Mr. Chair. So to add to that, let me inform you that the ITBPM sector is targeting 2.3 million jobs by 2028. That's the aggressive scenario. 2.3 million jobs by 2028 with expected revenue of 49 million US dollars. That is the aggressive scenario, Mr. Chair, from 1.9 million today. However, the constrained scenario if you will not be passing this bill, we will only have 1.6 million jobs by 2028. So this bill is really very important, Mr. Chair. We don't want the constraint scenario. We want the aggressive scenario. Number four, Mr. Chair, I would like to respectfully also request that there be a clear statement of inclusion in the law, including local governments, provinces, and regions. It is our hope uh, being a provincial policymaker myself, a provinciana myself, it is my hope that jobs disperse, especially digital jobs, to the provinces. You see, 70% of our manpower are outside of Metro Manila, but almost 60 to 70% of digital jobs are concentrated in Metro Manila. So we need to disperse and include the countryside to generate jobs for the whole country, Mr. Chair. Number five, uh, I, I would like to also echo the, what my colleague mentioned about nurturing jobs in the emerging technologies. In the report of USAID Beacon today, Mr. Chair, I don't want to quote, 
not to sound any alarm, but we have a very small number of cybersecurity experts. This is very this is very alarming, Mr. Chair, especially for the ITBPM industry. Easily, we need to have 2,000 to 3,000 cybersecurity experts. And if we develop that, these are also jobs, Mr. Chair. We can create jobs in cybersecurity. We can create jobs in artificial intelligence, in Internet of Things. All these emerging technologies are job generators, Mr. Chair, if only we nurture an ecosystem conducive to creating these types of jobs. Uh, next, uh, Mr. Chair, is to ensure uh, concrete support for DEI. Uh, DEI, Mr. Chair, is an international term which means diversity, equity, and inclusion. I would like to echo the words of my colleague. We need to create jobs for women, for PWD, and also for senior citizens. Does that mean that you are a senior citizen? You can no longer work. So uh, if, we, if we concretely push for programs, to increase jobs for women, for, for PWDs, and for senior citizens. This will add to your numbers, Mr. Chair. And on that note, I would like to inform you for the record that the DICT will be launching next month the Digital Innovation for Women Advancement. We will count the number of women cybersecurity experts. We will count the number of women computer engineers. We will count the number of women software developers because we want to destroy the stigma that ICT jobs are only for men. Because now, ICT jobs, we have only a few takers. So I suggest we encourage the women to go into ICT, Mr. Chair. Then, Mr. Chair number seven, I'd like to echo the, the concern on the budget. Please ensure that there is a budget for this bill, Mr. Chair, because this is investment in the human capacity of this country. We have big investment in infrastructure, but we also need to invest in human capacity. Number eight, Mr. Chair, uh, uh, number eight, Mr. Chair, is to uh, ensure that industry is not only sitting in the council, but are actually calibrating our job skills training. The concept is industry calibration. The end user of all our trainees are the industry. So, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I'd like to mention that you have been witness of how your efforts in TESDA have helped grow Bacolod from zero to 40,000 jobs today because of industry calibration, where all the trainings are calibrated with the needs of the industry. And finally, Mr. Chair, our ninth recommendation with all due respect and very humbly, Mr. Chair, if you can include us in the IAC. <laughs> because, because I think that the DICT, given the need for digital skills and digital infrastructure, would uh, be most useful in the IAC, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Yusek, maraming salamat. Uh, Yusek uh, Batapasigi. Uh, Senator Nancy, uh, we were talking a while ago about the importance of... Uh, of uh, Focusing our efforts in the uh, cybersecurity experts and producing uh, experts, uh, Senator Nancy and Senator JV. Anyway, Senator Nancy, please. And, uh, siguro, Mr. Chairman, gusto ko lang tanong kay Yusek Sige, kung na-convey niya na ba sa, I don't know, kung sa CHED or sa TESDA, yung need for cybersecurity personnel? The study, Mr. Chair, which is very much helpful, uh, conducted by IBM, uh, and uh, USAID Beacon was just released uh, last month, last year. And I think uh, the good Senator uh, Grace was there during the launching. And it was very uh, uh, insightful, Mr. Chair. Masyadong kulang yung ating uh, skill on cybersecurity. Merong, merong submission doon, uh, Your Honor, that uh, the Philippines should create a cybersecurity talent committee to really work together and develop uh, cybersecurity capacity across all sectors, Mr. Chair. So, so hindi so, pa po na sa start. Hindi. So technically, you said, hindi niyo pa nasasabi dun sa TESDA or sa CHED that you need to create a curriculum for cybersecurity personnel. Wala pang ganong transfer of uh, ano ba, information Kasama po doon sa proposal at nandun din po yung TESDA, DepEd, and CHED. And I'm just hoping that within this first quarter, we can group together and address the proposal. Uh, so yung sa event na na-mention, TESDA and CHED, present sila 
Yes, Your Honor. That, sig- yes. Siguro maganda malaman, Mr. Chairman, kung, um, kung papunta na ba si TESDA dun sa pag-develop ng um, cyber security personnel. Because kahit ako, uh, kailan ba yun? A few months ago, I did an ocular inspection of um, sa isang telco na meron silang cyber security uh, center. And kahit sila sinasabi nila na on their own, sila mismo yung nagtitrain dahil dun sa, para dun sa sarili nilang demand. Meron mo ba ganun yung TESDA? And Senator Nancy, you're not proposing that DICT be part of TESDA board? Okay. Anyway, uh, sige, uh, who wanted to answer? Uh, si DDG uh, Umali, may, may, may we know if uh, TESDA is uh, aware of all these uh, developments? Uh, 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 yes, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Senator Joel, Senator Nancy, uh, meron po tayong mga qualifications po uh, on uh, ICT uh, and uh, related to cyber security. And uh, our team has just provided, for example, the basic, common, and core competencies po. Ganun po yung uh, mga terminology yung ginagamit uh, natin, uh, Senator Nancy, if you may, na dapat kinakailangan ng ating mga manggagawa, middle-level workers uh, related to cybersecurity. And we intend to closely coordinate with our DICT lalong-lalo na po sa pagbuo po nung tinatawag nga po nating industry board, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Senator Nancy, kasi ito pong industry board, uh, 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 Mr. Chair, uh, Senator Nancy, ang isa po sa mandato nito ay matukoy po yung mga skills and competency nga po na kinakailangan ng industriya patungkol sa ating pong pinag-uusapan natin ngayon sa cyber security. Una, pangalawa, sila po dapat ang nanguna rin, uh, tulad po ng sinabi ng ating uh, USEC uh, ng DICT sa pagbibigay po ng uh, eksperto dahil sila po ang talagang nakaaalam kung ano po ba dapat ang nilalaman ng ating pong tinatawag na training regulations. Ito po yung parang curriculum or modules na gagamitin po uh, ng ating mga uh, trainees. At uh, pangatlo po, at ang iba pa pong mga issues na kanilang kinakaharap para matugunan po yung pangangailangan nila. Uh, nais po natin buuin uh, ang, uh, ay, ang, ang uh, National Industry Board and uh, to the extent applicable regional and provincial level industry boards as also mandated anyway by Section 26 of RA 7796 on the establishment of industry boards. Uh, uh, Senator Joel, uh, Senator Nancy, and Senator J.B. Salamat po. Senator J.B., please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd just like to ask Guru si sa DTI and uh, other agencies. So, um, you know, uh, after we have gone through the pandemic, no, but there are um, new industries probably and new businesses, MSMEs that uh, sprung up. No? May mga, in every crisis, may opportunity. May mga bagong industries din na na nagsitayo. Uh, what are these ano, industries that we can, uh, that uh, you would like to focus on? Kung ano yung mga, ano po yung mga dumami, yung sexy si yung sexy Aldaba can answer. What are the industries that are, uh, or uh, new businesses or MSMEs MSM, that uh, are, uh, after the pandemic na talagang tingin nyo ang pwedeng i-focus natin? Salamat po uh, sa tanong, Senator JB. Um, ang mga nakita po natin na um, talagang nagkaroon ng malaking demand at uh, even yung pag-shift ng ibang mga enterprises, nandun po sila sa mga dig- nasa digital economy. So lahat po nung, uh, for example, sa e-commerce, uh, even po sa registration ng mga businesses sa DTI, nakita po namin yung napakalaking uh, increase. Um, pati na po sa creative economy, sa, ma, yung po mga creative industries, marami din po dyan, uh, mga work from home, mga freelancers. So, yun po yung nakita natin na malaking potential. Um, 
yung uh, ngayon po na strategy ng uh, DTI para sa ating mga industriya, ito po talaga yung nakatutok dun sa pagtulong, uh, sa pagsuporta dun sa mga science, technology, innovation-based uh, activities ng ating mga iba't ibang mga industriya. Kahit po yun ay uh, micro, small, medium, lahat po ay uh, kinakover nung uh, ating strate strategy. Tatlo, um, may apat po kaming uh, clusters na na-identify and one is uh, the advanced uh, manufacturing, industrial, uh, in industrial manufacturing and transportation. Nandun po yung mga electronics, nandun din po yung mga uh, electric uh, vehicles, yung mga parts po and components para sa EV, including yung mga green metals uh, na ipoprocess po dito sa bansa. Um, napakalaga din po apart from uh, the digital, yung mga nasa digital economy natin, creative economy, yung mga uh, naka-align um, dun po sa environment including yung mga health and health-related uh, activities. So yun po yung uh, isa ring pangalawang uh, um, priority po na nakita natin na pangalawang cluster yung mga um, health uh, um in, in, nandito po yung mga bio mga biotech including uh life uh, sciences uh, at yung mga um, apps po na gumagamit ng um, ba, mga makabagong technologies para po uh, matrack yung health and wellness ng uh, mga consumers. Nakita rin po natin yung shift hindi lang po sa bansa but um, globally uh, speaking, um, uh, Mr. Senator. And then yung third po would be the media and telecommunications. Um, nandun po yung ITBPM sector natin, yung creative, yung uh, digital economy, di dun din po magpa-fall sa sector na yon. And uh, makikita nyo po uh, maraming linkages itong mga tatlong sectors na nabanggit ko. Uh, in particular, yung po kahalagahan ng uh, electronics uh, industry na alam po natin, isa po yan sa strengths ng uh, Pilipinas. Um, and then yung fourth po would be the modern basic needs, um, including yung mga activities that would uh, promote uh, yung uh, pagiging, yung resiliency ng ating bansa. So naka, nandito po yung uh, food security, agriculture, food, agribusiness, including po yung mga infrastructure, most especially education, health, um, road, roads, telecoms. Um, and including yung mga green uh, and uh, mga environment-friendly activities, dun din po magpo-fall, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Senator. Uh, thank you. Uh, Yusek, also, di ba, itong, itong pandemic, marami ang naging ano na eh, um, nature, parang naging um, dumami yung mag gusto mag-outdoors na. And I have noticed also dito sa mga highways, going to Rizal, yung Marilaki, a lot of... Uh, coffee shops, restaurants, uh, even in Cebu, you know, sa Trans Central Highway. So these are the new industries kasi naging parang more naging outdoor na ang ano natin, no? These are the probably ito yung mga pwede natin tingnan kasi dumadami na talaga coffee shops, uh, small restaurants. It will help also our tourism industry kasi napansin ko lahat ng dinadaanan uh, dumami talaga nung pandemic. So these are opportunities and it's good to know, Mr. Chair, that uh, may short term and medium term tayo However, as um, one of my advocacies, I have filed also in comprehensive master plan for infra development. Ito naman po long term. I uh, just like to ask for DTI, Dolly um, Siguro and Tesda. Probably if we can also integrate already for this long term plan. Uh, as we know, um, yung administration has prioritized also infrastructure. No? Kaya nga po yung North South Commuter Line will be uh, is now in full blast. Tapos pag not, hopefully matuloy na yung South Long Haul Mindanao Railway. Once we finish all of this, we will create growth development areas, growth nodes in every province. No? We will have industrial parks, probably commercial areas, uh, food terminals. So, siguro in the long term, Mr. Chair, um, dito ma ito, ito yung maganda sa samahan namin. No? Si, si, si ang ating majority leader is really on job creation, no? training and everything, capacitating our people. Kami, uh, hati hati kami rito, si Senan, si Tur sa tourism na isa sa mga low-hanging fruit natin yan. Ako na po sa infra because this will spread out the development as mentioned kanina. We have to have, hindi dapat Metro Manila, Cebu o Dabaw lang. Dapat yung mga provinces din magkaroon ng 
uh, opportunities. So by creating um, these growth nodes, uh, lahat ng dadaan ng railways, uh, other airports, we'll have industrial parks, uh, commercial areas, and food terminals. So I hope that uh, the agencies who are present can look at this in the long term. No, kasi ang problema sa ating researcher, sa ating ba because of the political system, laging nakatoon sa short and medium term because of the six-year term. Kung anong presidente, titignan lang yun. But now, we really have to look, we have to have a blueprint that we will follow in the next uh, 20, 30, even 50 years. Pwede ba, ano, short response lang sa mga um, agencies, siguro sa DTI o um, DOLE, probably in TESDA. Yes, uh, um, Mr. Senator, um, of course, we all know uh, yung importance ng uh, infrastructure, especially dun sa mga uh, in the priority uh, industries that I uh, mentioned earlier. Kailangan, kailangan po yan. And uh, kami naman po sa DTI, liban sa pagtulong nga sa pag-attract ng mga industries. But uh, yung mga strategic, meron po tayong strategic investment priority plan DTI po, uh, BOI and DTI po, kami po yung in charge in terms of crafting this in collaboration with uh, the other investment priority uh, agencies and uh, the DOF. Um, kasama po yon sa mga priorities and in fact, ang dami po namin nakikitang mga um, ap applications uh, in terms of building ito. Ito nga po, mga new roads, bridges, um, including airports, uh, and yung mga industrial zones, uh, kasama din po yun sa mga ini-incentivize natin. So, malaking tulong po, apart from the incentives, but uh, especially din yung pagpasa ng, Philippi uh, ng Public Service Act, which is going to liberalize yung uh, foreign equity um, dun sa mga sectors po na nabanggit. If I may uh, answer and respond, uh, Your Honor, so Department of Labor and Employment, because we're preparing this labor and employment plan, where we are identifying really key growth areas, and in fact, uh, we already got instructions to be able to start estimating employment generation from key areas, which will include our investments, pledges of investments in the country, where we have also growth areas, infrastructure, and also particularly on specific growth sectors. So, ginagawa na po namin yon. Hopefully, in our labor and employment plan, we can integrate this employment estimate so we can see what, how much employment can be generated by these different sectors and growth areas. Thank you. Siguro, anyway, Mr. Chair, ang TESDA, madali, ang advantage ng TESDA, madali, madali maka-adjust yeah. uh, sa curriculum or kung ano yung demand. Siguro ang, ang DMW rin, siguro si Yosek Hans, yung sa mga OFWs natin, no? probably we can all, in the long term, kung talaga matuloy itong industrialization natin, matapos yung ma-infra, yung reintegration ng OFWs natin, no? uh, probably that will, should be part of uh, the long-term plan of the DMWs. Kasi hindi naman natin gustong, hindi rin naman plano ng mga OFWs natin na forever sila nandun. So probably your integration, you can include already Hopefully, pag natapos yung mga infra, again, as I mentioned, industri uh, it's good to know that in the industrialization na yung ating uh, yung, uh, yung, uh, direction forward. And when the infrastructure is already in place, I think with the creation of the growth nodes, we can already um, include the reintegration of our OFWs in this uh, long-term uh, comprehensive master plan. Your Honor. Yes. Can we uh, uh, give the floor to Yusek uh, yeah. Hans? Please? Yes. Yes. Thank you, po, Chair uh, Senators Binay and Senator JV. Yes, po, definitely uh, uh, top of mind, po, one of the priorities of Secretary Toots, if he, she were still here, uh, would be reintegration. And uh, tama po kayo na tumbok niyo po, Sen. JV, yung infra. Uh, kasi marami na tayong karanasan ng mga engineers, for instance, na nakatulong sa mga DOTR projects and DPWH. Uh, so meron na tayong mga karanasan, siguro i-broaden na lang natin, lalakihan natin ng scale uh, para po mas marami ang makabalik at makapagtrabaho. Uh, sa teaching naman po, marami na po rin mga uh, merong let, uh, la teaching licenses, na nakauwi na po through a joint project with the DepEd. Uh, and uh, we're so proud na sila yung naninilbihan na po sa public school system natin, lalo na yung mga dating domestic workers na 
teachers. And then sa domestic workers, speaking of domestic workers, ano banggit ni Sen Nancy kanina, uh, nakikita po natin dito sa uh, hotel and restaurant management, uh, sa pagtatayo ng mga uh, kainan at mga caregiving facilities, yun po may substantial role sila. At kahit nga ho sa factory work, uh, kung uh, halimbawa po, uh, Uh, assembly line or, or electronics based ang isang factory. May nakikita rin ho kaming opportunities for returning female workers uh, sa mga assembly line uh, uh, manufacturing facilities. Uh, so, yun po, um, malina po na may game plan po sa reintegration. We could present it perhaps at a future time and we will align ourselves with the relevant agencies. Thank you, Abig Marci, uh, Yosek, ano, no, uh, Mr. Chair. Siguro, i-take note na rin na uh, kasi full blast na ngayon yung mga infra, no? And siguro, for so many years, tsaka wala tayong modern, ano eh, ngayon palang papasok. I think that uh, the DOTR and, uh, would need itong mga skilled workers natin, especially yung sa mga railways and others. No, why? Meron, meron kasama doon sa pagtatag yung, ano eh, Philipp, yung parang uh, National, uh, Railways Institute. But that would take a while. So, magandang, ano, Mr. Chair, that those um, OFWs do have already has the skill, talagang ito yung immediate natin. Panang, pag naging online itong North South Commuter Line, subway system, Mindanao Railway System, uh, that would, it would take a while for, uh, baka, bago na pa kinabangan yung gagraduate siya na Philippine National Railway Institute. So, yun ang maganda, no? please take of that, uh, Josek, uh, Hans, no? salamat at uh, meron kayong plano gano'n. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Senator JV. No? Very insightful ideas yung uh, ni-raise ni Senator JV. And uh, we're glad that he's back here in the Senate. Kasi uh, if you look at, for example, the uh, report of uh, the uh, Philippine Labor Force Survey, as of November 2022, the top five sectors with highest year on uh, year change in number of employed persons Wholesale, 1.31. If we can uh, show the slide. Uh, manufacturing, 975,000. Accommodation and food services activities, 750,000. Transportation and storage, 491,000. Administrative and support service activities, 376. Now, yung slide na pinapakita natin, yun yung top five uh, sectors, largest ano naman po yan, drop in number of employed persons. Uh, kung titingnan natin eh, sa agri, ang laki eh. uh, Fishing and aquaculture, 532,000. Education, 45,000. Arami din nagsara na, ng mga eskwelahan uh, during the pandemic. Now, public admin and defense, compulsory social security, 40,000. And then construction, 30,000. And uh, as Senator JB saying, uh, magpipick up na to eh, this uh, coming years. And uh, based on uh, 2021 MSME statistics, there is a total of 1.80 million business enterprises, of which 1.076 million or 99.58% are MSMEs. And so itong uh, micro enterprises constitute 90.54% or 978,612 of the total establishments. So, importante talaga na masynchronize natin yung efforts natin and uh, to find out where are these industries, emerging industry sectors that we are looking at uh, to have a, uh, a high growth potential, both in terms of amount of investments and number of jobs that it will uh, uh, be generated. And as mentioned earlier by Senator Jamie, napakaganda nung sinabi niya na ready dapat tayo sa workforce natin dito sa mga... Uh, Uh, jobs that will be created. Babalikan ko lang yung sa uh, DICT, no? Um, uh, first, I have to say na part of the measure, Section 6, Letter D, yung collaboration with uh, LGUs in planning, devising, and implementing employment recovery and job generation within their localities. Maganda yung binanggit ni Yusek about, uh, uh, about having a target. No, bilanggit natin kanya yung 1.7 million at least maging uh, target natin but let's 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 uh, uh, assess itong nangyari itong uh, national employment recovery strategy ano ba yung performance natin and uh, one one issue that uh, I, i i i i thought about is the uh, importance of having a clear connectivity plan no kasi uh, 
we need to have a clear connectivity plan if we want to have more uh, digital jobs and digital uh, workers across the country. Maybe we know from the ICT, yung, uh, meron na ba tayo yung concrete, uh, uh, clear connectivity plan, uh, ma'am, Yusek? Uh, Thank you, Your Honor. With regards to the connectivity, uh, Your Honor. Please, that... please, this is a working uh, lunch. Uh, feel free to to have your lunch. Thank you. Alam ko si Yusek Hans hindi magandang pakiramdam dahil talo yung Celtics. Uh, sige, Yusek, uh, uh, Giselle, please. Yeah. With regards to connectivity, Your Honor, we will include it in our position paper, the full report in terms of connectivity. Maganda po yung ating projection because uh, we are almost 80% done with our public broadband. Hindi pa, no? Hindi pa and, tapos uh, yung connectivity plan. Natin. Hindi pa tapos, Your Honor, but we have so many interests coming from uh, international where, where private sector. you made mention 80%? Uh, for the broadband, uh, yung paglatag ng infrastructure, Your Honor. I'm, yes, not, I'm, not I'm afraid. The entire connectivity plan. Yes, Your Honor. But we are looking at different alternatives. We have uh, low orbit satellites. We we will actually uh, test uh, one low orbit satellite next month when we host the ASEAN Digital Minister Summit in in Boracay, Your Honor. But rest assured that uh, we are working uh, overtime because that is number one in our agenda. But to directly answer your question, Your Honor, I'd like to uh, uh, inform you that the DICT has been assisting for the longest time uh, what we call centers of excellence, next wave cities, and digital cities across the whole country. Today, we have 31 digital cities, we have 10 next wave cities, and six centers of excellence. And kasama po doon, uh, Your Honor, yung apat na parameter. Number one, talent development. Number two, business environment. Number three, digital infrastructure. So, ang nangyayari po ngayon, uh, Your Honor, is kanya-kanyang sariling sikap din yung mga LGUs, ensuring their own connectivity. You know? For example, I want to cite the very good example of Bogo City in the province of Cebu. They actually fully spent for their own fiber connectivity. Buong syudad. So, lalagyan na lang namin ng, ng anong tawag doon, <laughs> yung, yung, yung tubig na mag uh, ano sa sa connectivity infrastructure na yan. So, uh, a good news, Your Honor, is all these 31 cities will be assisted by an interagency uh, group also led by the ICT to create their own job targets. So, as part of our commitment, Your Honor, we will submit to your committee the total job targets per city. No? So, for example, Ligaspi is targeting 20,000 jobs in, in digital jobs. Let's say Batanga City is targeting 10,000 jobs. So, i-add po namin itong digital cities jobs, Your Honor, at i add po ito sa gusto niyong goal na 1.7 million. That is our concern. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you no? Kasi I, I, I believe itong um, uh, industries emerging after uh, pandemic or with great potential, kasama dyan yung digital economy, creative industries, and malaking, uh, malaking uh, tulong at malaking uh, uh, napaka-importanting uh, uh, part nitong ating uh, ginagawa itong uh, clear connectivity plan and I'm glad that uh, you made mention that this is your number one uh, okay. priority. So, your Honor, maraming salamat po. Your, mm -hmm. your Honor, if I may just add, we assist these LGUs to identify their niche. Mm -hmm. So, every LGU will say game development sila, animation sila, healthcare sila. And very quickly... Huwag lang online gambling against <laughs> ako dun. Okay. Uh, Ma'am, just, just to ano, no? uh, so we can uh, uh, discuss uh, further. Uh, yes, uh, did you, Mali? You okay. wanted to add something? Opo, idadagdag ko lang po kanina yung intervention po ng TESDA na bagamat wala pa nga po tayong training regulation para po uh, sa cybersecurity po ng sinabi po ng ating DICT USEC, Mr. Chair, ay nakabuo na po tayo na ito po yung katumbas ng cyber security, Mr. Chair, uh, Senator Nancy, Computer Security Incident Handling Level 2 Competency Standards po. Ang mga makakapagtapos po nitong qualification pong ito ay maaari pong maging Computer Security Incident Handler, Computer Security Support Staff, Computer Security Help Desk Staff, 
among the core competencies that they will possess, Mr. Chair, if they complete this qualification is they should be able to provide appropriate action to prevent a possible event or incident, conduct manual removal of malware or threats, ensure efficient case management of handled event incident, monitor volume case reporting, among others. We will provide additional information po, Mr. Chair, uh, in relation po dun sa, sa pag, uh, uh, yung kanina pong uh, napag-usapan on cybersecurity. Salamat po, Mr. Thank Chair. Thank you. No? Uh, just to also uh, uh, propound on the digitalization, yung shift to digitalization, which we all agree na uh, malaking potential. Siguro matanong natin ng DOLE and DTI, if you have, kanina binabanggit ng DICT, yung uh, mga local government units having their own program on uh, shift to digitalization, etc. Meron po ba tayong mapping of, uh, for example, MSMEs across the country that have yet to uh, shift to digitalization and uh, um, meron ho, uh, from which regions are these uh, MSMEs located? What are the identified challenges that prevent them from uh, adapting full or uh, partial uh, digitalization digitalization of uh, operations? Uh, perhaps if we could hear uh, from the both uh, departments or these agencies, yung, yung plano po in conducting a digital technology and digital skills uh, mapping nationwide. Sige, uh, you sectores. Your Honor, thank you very much for your question. Uh, as of now, wala kaming pang mapping ng MSMEs, but ang aming i-contribute dito yung aming public employment service offices, which we are strengthening right now to be able to link them to industry, education institutions, and the various technical institutions so that we can link yung mga job seekers to the vacancies. Right now, we have a, a total of um, 1,900 uh, public employment service offices. Uh, they are um, 1,592 are LGU-based and uh, 334 are uh, non-LGU based, basically they're based in uh, education institutions and local government institutions. And we have uh, been monitoring yung placement nila. We've increased the placement rates. And, and um, last, uh, last year, um, last year, for example, we have placed about uh, almost 2 million job seekers na. I, I have been uh, following yes. this up, you know, yes. very well okay. that I defended the budget of yes. Dole for quite some time. And uh, ito, pagdating sa peso budget, especially yung facilitation ng inyong mga conferences, I'm very supportive of it. Yes. Not only because I'm a perennial guest speaker of, <laughs> of uh, peso conferences, no? but uh, just to clarify, no, you made mention uh, 1,900. Kasi yung last time we were deliberating uh, uh, RA uh, ito yung 11927, itong Philippine Digital Workforce Competitiveness Act. Alam na alam ni uh, Yusek Aldaba ito. Uh, yung number of pesos then was 1639 based on peso directory. Um, and then dun sa website, nakalagay naman 1560. So parang bumaba po. And uh, I'm happy to hear na you were saying 1,900. So okay. hindi naman bumaba, no, ma'am? Uh, updated po itong figures namin kasi kasama dito yung non-LGU pesos, na which we also promote. Kasi in fact, my when you say non-LGU peso, that means... Uh, based in educational education institutions. institutions. Yes, so kasama you. dito. So para tumutulong sila malaki sa aming pag ano identify ng job seekers and vacancies but uh, your honor to also mention to you uh in intensify namin yung digitalization process kasi we have our field job net na ang peso natin ngayon ay ini strengthen in fact for this year we have a very comprehensive capacity building program for our peso we met the peso managers in fact uh, late last year to be able to strengthen and prioritize strengthening uh, pesos in terms of digitalization and secondly the institutionalization of the pesos nationwide kasi ko konti pa lang yung institutionalized but we would like
to strengthen this process of institutionalization. Thank you, thank you ma'am. Speaking of field job nets, uh, quick stats, as of January 23, it shows that it had 14,432 job seekers with 11,204 job seekers hired. Okay, ah. Uh, pero ang concerning lang is that it indicates that there are only 2,393 employers on the website. May, may, may we know the difference or bakit, uh, I mean, how, how do you promote itong field job net? Kasi, di ba, pag uh, nakipag-usap ka sa isang ordinaryong Pilipino, tatanungin mo sa kanila, o saan kayo naghanap ng trabaho? Paano kayo nakakuha? Ang madalas sasabihin nila, no, and I'm not promoting Job Street and LinkedIn, wala ho silang bayad dito sa, sa pagdinig na ito, but uh, marami po naririnig natin uh, dun, 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 dun sila pumunta. Um, siguro that's why I, 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 it prompt me to ask this question, how are we improving itong uh, field job net to compete with other portals and to encourage enterprises to also list their vacancies. Kasi nga, ito nga po, 2,393 employers lang yung nasa website natin. Ma'am? Ah, we are in fact strengthening our field job net. Una-una, we say, it's free. Kasi pag pumunta ka dun sa ibang mga job bayad streets, yun. Yun, yeah. may bayad. So ito, free. And we're promoting this kasi hindi lahat ng tao may nalalaman na free ito and they can just log in or pumunta sa isang peso at mag-apply. Uh, secondly, pinopromote namin to sa job seekers kasi pumunta kayo sa aming peso kasi matutulungan kayong uh, makukuha ng trabaho. Pero hindi lang yung mag apply kayo. Mayroong counseling process na guiding them to what kind of employment should fit your skills. Kasama yung career counseling at kung kailangan mo ng training, anong kasing training para ma-enhance ka at makaabot ka dun sa job na gusto mo. Y yan yun for the job seekers. And for the employers, we're promoting them and encouraging them to uh, submit data on vacancies. Kasi yung iba natatakot baka ma, ma multa sila dahil hindi sila nagsasubmit ng information. But ang sabi namin, ito, when you submit, we are also helping you find the right job seeker. Matutulungan namin kayong ma-fill up yung vacancies nyo at kung hindi, eh, guide you through the process of finding the job, the right job seeker. So yun yung strengthening process ngayon ng aming uh, field job net plus of course, we will have a comprehensive capacity building for our public employment service offices. Thank you. Thank you, Yusek Torres. Yusek uh, Aldaba, ma'am. Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, we did a survey, um, this one, um, prior to the pandemic for manufacturing in 2019. And what we found was 70% uh, um, po nung uh, companies that were surveyed, which would comprise um, micro, small, medium, and large enterprises all over the country. Um, so around 70% um, yung nasa, gumagamit pa ng low technology, meaning mga manual, paper-based, um, wala pong masyadong system dun sa kanilang mga uh, factories. And um, mostly yung mga nag utilize na ng mga high uh, technologies, meaning yung mga Industry 4.0 technologies such as Internet of Things or yung mga papunta na po sa uh, pag-build ng mga smart factories. Ito po yung mga large enterprises, um, enterprises that have foreign direct investment as well as those that are in NCR as well as uh, those in uh, highly urbanized areas. So kung malayo ka po sa NCR, talagang yun yung mga low-tech pa na mga companies. And um, during the pandemic, tinuloy po namin yung survey, but this time we focused on agriculture and agribusiness sector uh, in coconut, coffee, cacao, um, and fruits and nuts in uh, Mindanao. And again po, ang major finding is 90% um, no mga companies that were surveyed ay nandun pa sa low-tech industry 1.0. So, um, um, ang, amin pong, uh, ang amin pong nakita in terms of uh, uh, the difficulties uh, faced by uh, enterprises in shifting towards uh, new technologies, yun nga po yung 
yung, they were concerned about costs. They were also uh, concerned uh, doon sa um, poor uh, internet, internet, connectivity. Uh, doon sa kanilang or connectivity, doon sa kanilang mga areas. And as we know, doon po sa mga malalayong lugar talagang uh, hindi, hindi si, nahihirapan, nahihirapan sila. And then uh, some of them also yung uh, wala pong ano wala talagang uh, capability so talagang pinag-iisipan but um, in terms of those that have uh, the capabilities to invest in these new technologies um, internal na lang yung kanilang mga plans and then uh, naghahanda sila by carrying out more R&D um, so no nakita po namin ito kaya yung mga programs na kinraft namin uh, talagang nakafocus dun sa mga difficulties. Like number one, um, we uh, are implementing a program together with uh, Topo with Singapore uh, as well as with the World uh, Economic Forum. And then we have uh, tech partners like Siemens, yung Smart Industry Readiness Index. Um, through the support of ADB, uh, libre po yung, na, nakapagbigay kami ng mga libreng assessments uh, dun sa mga companies um, in terms of talagang formally uh, assessing yung kanilang readiness in terms of adapting these new technologies. And after nung assessment, uh, ginagawan po sila ng parang roadmap kung papaano makakapag-shift yung company uh, Gradual naman po yung mga plano, depende rin, ina-assess yung resources na meron siya, including yung mga tao na, na kailangan din nilang uh, ihanda as they adapt these uh, new technologies. And meron pong mga, ma, mga uh, small enterprises, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, nung, nung malaman nila itong programa na ito, lumapit po sa amin and uh, nagvo-volunteer or nagtatanong kung papaano mapapa-assess yung kanilang mga processes. Kasi nga, um, dahil manual, but alam nila na by adopting these new technologies, pwedeng mag-increase yung kanilang uh, capacities. Meron pong uh, uh, nasa uh, pinyapel, uh, so pineapple uh, paper po yung minamanufacture nila, eh ang laki-laki ng demand sa Europe, hindi po nila makayanan kasi nga dahil puro manual. So yun po yung uh, uh, isang nakikita namin na bright spot talaga na um, while of course natatakot ang marami na pag nag-adapt ka ng mga gantong technologies, liban sa kamah may kamahalan yung investment, and at the same time, maraming workers yung madidisplace. Pero ito po yung isang illustration na um, habang uh, nag adapt ka naman ng mga bagong technologies, may mga ibang workers syempre na maapektuhan. Pero may mga new activities po na pwede mo ipagawa sa kanila through reskilling and upskilling. Kaya po kami napunta rin doon sa initiative, Mr. Chair, na Philippine Skills Framework para ma-identify po natin together with the industry ano-ano yung mga bagong trabaho that could emerge. Kasi po, this new technology is talagang napakabilis eh. So, kung hindi tayo nakahanda, uh, talaga pong baka tayo ay maiwanan. And that's the reason, Yusek, why we, why we filed the bill that is now a law Ito pong Philippine Digital Workforce, tayo po ang principal author, principal sponsor nito. Uh, dinipensa natin ito dito sa Senado, dito uh, from where we are right now, uh, with the support of Senator Nancy Binay, of course. Um, just to again remind all of you, under Section 6, Letter B of the said law, ang um, DOLE as the lead agency and in collaboration with the DICT, LGUs, and other stakeholders shall conduct a digital technology and skills mapping nationwide, identifying the available skills and competencies, skills gaps, and training needs, demographics of the Philippine workforce in digital technology and sectors, and the availability and access to digital uh, platforms and ICT infrastructure, among others. Nakalagay po sa batas yan, just to remind our uh, government agencies. Perhaps it's also a good uh, opportunity now to talk about how many, or if we have some figures uh, on the number of workers involved in the uh, digital economy. Meron na po ba tayo? Or still, ano tayo? We're still a uh, work in progress pa rin. Oh. But we are seeing this as a, a growth potential, no? itong uh, industriya na ito. Even the president himself is uh, talking about the uh, 
importance of uh, passing a law uh, ng digitalization kasi nakikita ni natin yung uh, potential uh, growth dito and uh, again jobs 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 anyway um there are any other comments yes uh you say uh, uh bata pa sige thank you your honor may i just uh reinforce what you said and also to the question earlier of Senator JB. Uh, despite the pandemic, Your Honor, in the Network Readiness Survey of the World Economic Forum, the Philippines actually climbed 12 notches higher from number 83 to number 71. And our biggest, uh, uh, this climb was actually pushed by uh, one factor, Your Honor, which is impact, the impact of technology and network readiness. And I'd like to make mention, Your Honor, that in high-tech and medium high-tech manufacturing, we are number 28 out of 100 countries. In prevalence of gig economy, we are actually number 36 out of 100 countries. When the world was going down in terms of other industries, Your Honor, our gig economy, our online freelancing economy, increased by 247%. Now, uh, pushing the numbers to about 4 million to 5 million people in the online economy, Your Honor. And the biggest jump, Your Honor, and so proud to say, na nagsalba sa atin sa Pilipinas during the pandemic is really ICT services exports. So, uh, pwede po tayong maglaan ng pera sa manufacturing, but we cannot deny the fact that we are really uh, dominating ICT services export from healthcare information management to creative information and content development to IT BPM services to architectural and engineering, to legal outsourcing, to all types of global employment, Your Honor, ang pinakamalaki po nating uh, industriya ay ang ating tao because they generate this ICT services exports, which is now considered as high-tech, high-quality exports, not normally just voice-enabled, but also IT skills enabled, enabled. At ito po yung pinakamalaking reason why we jump in, the, in this uh, network readiness survey, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, with that, uh, sige, Yusek uh, Aldaba, you wanted to... Uh, very quickly lang po, Mr. Chair. Since uh, you were asking a while ago yung uh, digital economy figures, Mr. Chair, kamukha po sa creative uh, industries natin, um, kailangan po natin uh, siguro isama sa discussion ang PSA, um, especially since yung pong mga industry codes, sectoral codes, hindi pa po talaga na-identify. Kaya very loose po yung definition natin ng digital economy. Um, in fact, nag-criss-cross uh, po yan sa iba't ibang mga sector. So it would really be uh, helpful and useful para po magkaroon ng official statistics masama sa mga PSA surveys kung ma-identify po natin yung, yung mga specific codes. Because right now talagang nakalam... It's confusing to yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for uh, raising, raising that uh, issue. Uh, I, I'd like to ask yung, yung, yung Ned, uh, no? unless you, you wanted to, to say something, uh, Ms. Excel. Yung, yung Ned came up with uh, in September 2021, NEDA estimated that the total cost of the COVID-19 pandemic and quarantines for present and future generations of Filipinos is estimated at 41.4 trillion for the next 40 years. So yung epekto ng pandemia ay eh mararamdaman hindi lang ng ating mga anak kundi pati yung mga apo natin sa loob ng apat na pung taon. Gusto nating malaman kung papaano ba na nakatulong na ibsan kasi what we are talking about here is the institutionalization of the national employment recovery strategy we wanted to find out the impact of this uh, program why we wanted to improve it itong nurse uh, 2.0 ika nga no uh, uh, to net us outlook on the long run uh, yung total cost po in binanggit ko na 41.4 trillion that the country sustained due to COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So, ano yung in impact nito ng, uh, sa ating uh, National Employment Recovery Strategy to uh, 2021, 2022? Kasi, uh, if I am not mistaken, uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong, ang uh, National Employment Recovery nag-target ng 2.2 million jobs by the end of 2022. And uh, so far, 
yung nakita nating uh, employment rate uh, is a welcome development from 7.7% in June of 2021 to 4.2% this November 2022. So in terms of uh, 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 reduction ng uh, future wages, binanggit din dito dun sa report, ang amount is about 11 trillion pesos, if I'm not mistaken. No? So, kita natin, merong, merong effect yung uh, program ng National Employment Recovery Strategy, yung uh, positive impact nito. Uh, but I, I, I wanted to, to get a categorical uh, answer if it's a yes or no. And by how much we were able to address the estimated uh, reduction in future wages, and productivity of our present and the future labor workforce. Sir, Mr. Chair, in your concern, definitely this um this this bill or this this nurse and they um would 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 help a lot in terms of cushioning the impact of those losses that we have computed. Because as you said, a big chunk of the losses were basically the impact of the of the face to uh, what, what, what yung, yung online and offline learnings um, because basically uh, the, the when you look at the non face to face learning and the, the impact is that um, it's between 19 to about 30, 40% lang yung ano yun, yung the, the quality right so if you're saying that the two years tayo and then it's only looking at let's say half lang. That's about one year, one year of of learning losses that we have, and basically a one one year of learning is equivalent to um up to nine nine percent in terms of future earning abilities. So I think what's important two things: the supply side, make sure that yung yung um yung yung dep ed would have would have a lot of this um. Um, learning catch up strategies like tutoring, extended classes. That's important. Second, in Ched, um, it, it, um, for for higher higher education and technical and vocational. Again, in the quality and again the matching. So again, the this one would 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 definitely address those. Um, potential learning losses that we have. So 9% that you're talking about. So, pag sinabi mong itong two years pandemic, is it 9 plus 9? So 18%? Ganun yun? Yes. So minimum, that's the minimum. But that's the impact on impact. on, yeah, on, impact. on, on um, er, future earnings, future earnings. Of, of that of that particular person. So again, yeah. it's, it's, so it, it's a big impact na and lang, one year of learning loss is equivalent to that during the lifetime of that particular. Yes, and that's why uh, after itong program ended in 2022, may estimate uh, po ba kayo on how an institutionalization of this uh, particular initiative, this strategy, will minimize the economic cost of the pandemic? Considering, especially now that we have heard I mean, none of us here are actually uh, against the measure. We all believe that this is needed. We all believe that we need to synergize and uh, put our acts together in uh, combating unemployment, underemployment, promoting um, skills development program, retooling, reskilling. Meron po ba tayong uh, estimate, uh, sir? No, we'll have to make additional runs for that, Mr. Chair. Uh, but definitely, I think, um, aside from, again, improving the, ano, the, um, the opportunities, right? Accessibility to work, which, again, um, the, the NEAP and the IAC um, is objective. I think we also have to go back to, ano, to again, looking at the, the quality and the and the catch up plan for again for the mostly for the basic ano eh, yung mga primary primary um, chil, um school children so i think that's very important it's not it's not the um the main objective of the of the law but it's there and that, that's why we said that we would like to have dep ed and ched 
in the council, mainly because, again, you want to address that. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, let, let, let me focus on the uh, uh, program of our government regarding job skills uh, mismatch. I think uh, all of us would, would, would agree that this has been a, a, a perennial uh, problem. In a study, and I'd like to, uh, to, to show a, a, a data here, a study uh, made by uh, Asian Development Bank, there has been an improvement in uh, uh, skills demand and supply alignment from 2012 to 2017. I had this data because I was then uh, as the secretary. Hindi ko, uh, hindi natin tinataas yung bangko natin, pero these are, these are facts. And uh, we use this during our uh, TESDP uh, uh, conferences when we were in TESDA. No? Yung skills supply and demand for... Uh, Ayan po, no? uh, for high-skilled jobs have matched while there is a narrower gap for mid-level skills and low-level skills from 2012 to 2017. Hindi ko alam kung ano yung data natin yun, no? but it's, it's good to note that uh, we can relate to this uh, when I was in TESDA as uh, contributing to the results of the better alignment of the skills demand and supply from 2012 to 2017 if you will look at the mid middle skilled no from 45 uh naging 30 46 to 35 uh yung low skilled uh from 31 naging 28 um yung skills demand uh bumaba na, na address ganun din dun sa high skilled no um gusto ko lang malaman kung uh, Yung current situation natin in terms of uh, uh, mismatch of skills, uh, ano po ba yung uh, nakikita natin uh, sa DOLE and TESDA, which industries have higher skills uh, mismatch more than uh, others? I think it's very important para uh, makita natin. Uh, lagi natin tinatanong to tuwing uh, budget deliberation is, and so, so, so that we'll be able to uh, address this uh, this uh, situation, these challenges we are facing, especially itong, uh, until now, we are still suffering from this uh, pandemic uh, effects of uh, skills demand and supply. Uh, kung meron po tayo yung uh, latest uh, figure natin, uh, Asik, Yusek uh, Torres, please. Uh, if I may uh, reply, uh, Your Honor. Um, actually po, we made a presentation sa cabinet, eh, yung upgrading the skills of the Filipino workforce. And uh, one of our findings is we use this ADB data, but ang sabi namin, because of the pandemic, there's still the mismatch, but also there is also the problem of the quality of our workforce. So when we estimated, uh, looked at the statistics, no ating workforce by occupational groups, we saw that um, many of our employed are in the elementary occupations. Kahit na high skilled or middle level skills sila, nagpupunta sila sa elementary occupations, maybe because of the ease of trying to get a job during the pandemic. That's one. And then, nung inanalyze po namin dun sa aming field job net statistics and data, we saw again yung mga job seekers were uh, looking for lower quality skills like. Uh, shop assistant, sales workers, uh, domestic work, and they were looking for such uh, vacancies for ease again of uh, getting employed and getting income. So ngayon, ang ating job now is to look again into this workforce and analyze what are the problems with respect to skills and how we could try to link them up to the better jobs, but also reskilling the tooling of the workforce okay, we're trying to we were working closely now with tesla on ensuring that now let's see what are the skills needs of our workforce there's still the mismatch it will continue for as long as there will be vacancies that cannot be filled by um, particular uh, job seekers na need ng skills. So that means that it, not only TVET but also our higher education uh, system should be looking into the needs of the future workforce kasi po uh, marami din na high tech 
skills. We're talking of the STEM, the science, uh, technology, uh, engineering, and mathematics kinds of skills. Kulang na kulang po tayo doon, kaya ngayon dapat talaga may i-redirect natin yung ating uh, skills programs and higher education programs. But of course, well, let's not neglect the K-12 kasi sila yung foundation ng ating programa. For as long as there's strong foundation of K-12, to they'll be able to work up towards uh, Tibet and work up towards higher education. Kaya dito pumapasok yung ating Philippine Qualifications Framework. Thank you, Yusek. No, at least, uh, yun nga, nagtutugma yung mga data natin and that is why, as you made mention a while ago, as you reported out, ito, ang underemployment natin increased. No, 6.67 uh, yes. million as of October 2022. Now it's uh, 7.16 million in November 2022. Ang nangyayari is kahit na highly skilled sila, ang kinukuha nila kung ano yung available na 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 na, na jobs. No, but uh, uh, it's also part of our job to uh, inform them na merong available jobs para sa inyo. Tugma doon sa inyong skills. No? Uh, lagi ko natin sinasabi yan, yung, uh, hindi kulang ang trabaho, ang, ang kulang ay yung skills natin na swak doon sa trabaho. And that's what we wanted to address in this uh, particular uh, measure. Thank you. Uh, uh, did, did I may you... add, yes, please. Um, in fact, we conducted several job fairs na po. Mm -hmm. Tourism, semiconductors. We even conducted job fair, a job fair for K-12. to Ang nangyari po, there's a lot of vacancies. Kaya hindi tayo nagkukulang ng jobs. Kulang yung ating uh, mga job seekers mm -hmm. na mahanapan. Yung aming K-12 job fair, uh, we had 10,000 vacancies, of course, of various qualifications, but 400 K-12 were employed at the time. Eh, sa ano lang po yun, sa Pasay lang. But when we conducted, for example, our tourism sa Cebu, uh, Davao and Metro Manila, ang daming vacancies and tinutukan namin yon. Nagkaroon ng near hires. So out of the 10, 11,000, almost 9,000 yung near hires. Ano ibig sabihin nito? Kailangan din ginagayad yung job seekers to the right job. Kasi unless you do a comprehensive approach to guiding them to the jobs, hindi tayo, hindi natin sila matutulungan sa pag, ano, to match them to the real vacancy. So, itong portion na to kailangan ding ayusin natin sa ating mga peso. Yes, tama po yun. And uh, we, we load the efforts of Dole. And let me also put on record, the first secretary who throw in uh, his support to this measure is Secretary Benny. During the LEDAC meeting, he was the first one to, to, to say and uh, report to the president himself that uh, this is very important. This particular measure is very important. So uh, thank you to Dole. But perhaps it's, it's, it's good also to note yung mga hard to fill jobs. Can, can we just uh, mention it? Marami rin nakikinig sa atin para lang uh, uh, mag-guide natin yung mga kababayan natin. So uh, dun sa 10 key employment growth areas, we did five, at least five studies together with TESDA and PIDS and tried to forecast yung ano, hard to fill jobs. Hard to fill kasi hindi natin mahanap yung mga the right job seekers. And maybe we also need to link closely with higher education kasi marami to high tech. Um, hard to fill jobs, uh, example, examples would be um, um, sa IT BPM, for example, we have game development artists. Uh, 2D cut-out animation, 3D animation, uh, software development. So it's a combination of hard to fill and critical occupations. And then sa construction, for example, we have uh, quantity surveying, even kahit na heavy equipment operator, kulang pa rin tayo. <laughs> Panahon ko pa sa Tesla, kulang na yan. Kulang na. Saka so, yung, yung, yung mga master carpenter. Um, yeah, lang din. Po pag, uh, you lang know, din. just just siguro not too long, mga two years ago lang siguro. Someone someone called me from from the Middle East, and he thought I'm still the head of Tesla, <laughs> asking me for two thousand welders. Mm -hmm. So I, I I 
I pointed to uh, then there's the secretary La Peña and uh, ala wala din silang makuha no parang uh, I I forgot if if NC2 holder yung hinahanap nila but uh, again these are these are low lying fruits na mm -hmm. pwede na nating i-harvest and it's common sense na do natin sila i-direct uh, when, we were, when we were in Tesla lagi natin sinasabi yung pagtanggal ng stigma na tech book lang, uh, yes, yung word yes. na lang dapat tanggalin. Uh, hindi, hindi dami mga skills na pwedeng mapag-aralan and uh, until now, if I'm not uh, mistaken, if you look at the data of those graduates from tech book uh, schools versus uh, the the tertiary education graduates, mas marami pa rin yung unemployed na, na, na tertiary education, tertiary education yes. graduates. So, so magandang uh, ituro sa ating mga kababayan na uh, importante alam natin yung uh, demand at uh, natutulungan din ng gobyerno yung ating mga kababayan na uh, puntahan itong o tahakin itong uh, landas na ito patungo sa magandang uh, trabaho. Thank you, uh, Yusek. Sorry, uh, DJ uh, Umali. Please, you have the floor. Opo. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, in relation to what you have just mentioned, uh, Mr. Chair, on the employability, for example, of our TESDA completers and graduates. Kung may isang daan po na makakapagtapos, completers, assess, certified, uh, Mr. Chair, mayroon po humigit kumulang na walumpu po rito sa isang daan na ito ang uh, magkakatrabaho. At tama po yung nabanggit nyo, Mr. Chair, uh, na mataas po yung uh, uh, employability at uh, talagang nakakatrabaho po pag nakapagtapos ng ating uh, test na whether NTR or TR, no training regulation or with training regulation courses. Uh, now, uh, in relation to also what was men mentioned by our USEC AMI, uh, Mr. Chair, under the guidance and leadership of our SEC Benny and uh, DG Dan Cruz, uh, uh, nagkakaroon po ng uh, uh, mahusay na pakikipag-ugnayan sa lahat po ng sektor para po yung konsepto ng uh, area-based, demand-driven, tech-voc education ay uh, talaga pong uh, masidhi po at malalim na mapatupad. Sa makatuwid, Mr. Chair, yung mga kurso po na nais po nating i-offer sa ating mga tinatawag po nating TTIs, TESDA, TechVoc Institutions, these are the uh, managed uh, regional provincial training centers, uh, TESDA administered schools, all more or less 183 of them, and our private TVIs, more or less 4,000, uh, maaaring bumabaho dahil po dahil sa pandemya, pero nung huli po, ang sabi po ng aming mga team members ay nasa liban libo po lahat ito, na ito lamang po ang mga kursong i-offer nila at with respect dun po sa ating scholarship allocations, ito lamang po yung mga pwede hong uh, makatanggap ng scholarship uh, allotments. Again, consistent with the uh, area-based demand-driven uh, framework on uh, TVET, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, in relation po dun sa uh, napag-usapan po natin na uh, priorities ng uh, TESDA. So, salamat po, uh, Mr. Chair. Your Honor. Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, DDG uh, Umali. Yes, Yusek. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, yes, Your Honor. I just like to add, Your Honor, that I think the committee, aside from the under identifying the hard to fill jobs, I think one of the important focus is really to look at the hiring rate, Your Honor, because uh, ang ang problema, Your Honor, is kung nagi increase tayo in terms of hiring rate, uh, especially for uh, graduates with entry level skills. Uh, in a more than a decade uh, discussion, Your Honor, especially on the ground with industry, uh, industry do not mind, uh, you know, infusing and spending for uh, product orientation, uh, integrating uh, specific uh, high-level technical skills uh, upon hiring. Part po ito uh, ng investment nila. Ang concern nila is really the entry-level skills. Like for example, for every 100 applicants, if dalawa lang po yung qualified, uh, matagal po yung, yung process. No? So I think we should really take a look at the entry-level skills. And when it comes to entry-level skills, I think there is no dearth of uh, global studies and researches showing 
what are these entry level skills in the latest 2022 uh, future proofing study of mckinsey uh, top three na entry level skills is one digital competence two critical thinking and three communication so sana po itong itong tatlong skills na to even in the level of elementary high school college uh, this is already integrated because these are really the important entry level skills pagdating po sa sa pag apply uh, ang process po is industry will have two to three months training ang hinihingi nila po sa atin your honor is sana mapaikli yung kanilang entry level orientation hindi naman po yung six months iti-train mo pa yung fresh graduate in ang galing na yan sa college no so um industry is willing to pay it forward by training uh, the new graduate, pero ang kanilang hinihingi is to increase the hiring rate from probably 10% to sana, let's double it, matagal ng discussion yung hiring rate, na out of 100 applicants, sana yung entry level skilled is mga 20 plus or 30 plus. So that is the uh, concern that, uh, that is the percentage also that we have to take a look at per, per region siguro, your honor, because LGUs are also investing in near hires and uh, bridging the gap between industry and uh, the talent. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Yusek. And uh, it's also important to note, yung tulong trabaho lo, yeah. na sino man nagpasa nun. Um, napakagandang batas na mayroong pondo na binibigay ang ating pamahalaan para tulungan yung ating mga industriya no? na maka makabigay ng uh, a training, uh, maaaring uh, ilang araw, Natanda ko nung, nung nasa TESDA din tayo, we had a partnership with SAP. Parang 15 days lang yung uh, uh, training program nila. But the but but the, 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 the training cost would be shouldered by TESDA. And then, I remember 96% yung uh, employment rate nila. And uh, tuloy-tuloy po yan na uh, ginagawa ng TESDA. Siguro one last issue na I'd like to uh, to raise Nandito naman si uh, Yusek Hans. Itong uh, employment opportunities for our OFWs, as early as August 2020, more than 600,000 displaced OFWs were uh, forced to return to the country and requested for assistance. Of those that returned, may, may, may we know how if we have a data as to how many have already found new jobs and uh, yung mga nakakuha ng bagong uh, employment na redeploy po ba sila abroad or na reintegrate sila dito or uh, may nakuha silang trabaho dito kung mayroon po tayong data you seconds please yes uh, chair we can provide the data po but uh, as far as i know uh, there was an iom study in 2020 that said around 70 percent of those who returned uh, still remained unemployed but that situation reversed. Uh, in 2022, I can't remember which month, maybe November or December, nagkaroon ng second round yung survey. And this time, uh, mga 25% yung nagsabing wala pa silang employment, whether self-employment or formal employment. So na-reverse po yung situation. And of course, added to this, Mr. Chair, yung nabanggit nyo na nagbubukas na rin po ang mga merkado sa Middle East. Uh, definitely, uh, back to normal na sila. We just came from Kuwait and uh, and Hong Kong and, and, and well, Hong Kong is not the Middle East, but uh, Dubai and, and Riyadh. Uh, definitely, ang thrust po ng economies doon, ng governments doon, very bullish sila. Of course, we heard the Crown Prince mentioned to the president in the APEC uh, summit uh, sidelines that uh, infra uh, is the main uh, economic activity that they will undertake in the next few months and years in Saudi. So they would need more Filipino workers. So uh, we are being optimistic po. Ang, ang uh, land-based deployment uh, tumaas na mga uh, 50 to 70 percent as far as I recall, uh, Mr. Chair. It could be higher. Uh, ina underestimate ko lang uh, uh, dahil uh, uh, ipepresent ko ho yung data. So that's even a conservative? Uh, yes, Mr. yes, 50 to 70 percent. Uh, sa C-based, uh, tumaas ng mga by November, I haven't seen the November, December data, but by November of last year, same period 
as compared to 2021, uh, tumaas ng mga 10,000 uh, seafarers ang deployment. So uh, we are already moving forward. But having said that, Mr. Chair, we still had not achieved pre-COVID levels of deployment. Uh, we're still probably around uh, 50, 60 percent of pre-COVID levels, but definitely the trend is upward. So deployment, Mr. Chair. Do you have any you know, uh, projection as to when are we going to reach that uh, pre-COVID level? Uh, mahirap po mag-project, Mr. Chair, as we are dependent on the markets abroad. Okay. Uh, but the way the trends are going, uh, baka po in two to three years' time, maka pre-COVID na po tayo. This is just my own uh, uh, estimate. The, the way the, the, uh, the spikes uh, are going uh, with the 50-70% increase between 21 and 22, ay in two to three years' time, tingin ko po mag-normalize na, Mr. Chair. Sige. Thank you. Unless any other uh, you wanted to... Uh, yes, Yusek uh, Torres. If I may, uh, tayo ay nasa ikatlong oras na ng ating pagdinig, but it's okay. Please, final, please. final po. Uh, when we were uh, contributing to the Philippine Development Plan, we were asked to submit a legislative agenda. We saw the importance of your bill, Your Honor. So uh, as part of the legislative agenda, we've included this bill, but we called it a job creation strategy bill. And basically, the contents and the details are of this bill. So, na andun po siya sa Philippine Development Plan 2023-28 as part of the legislative agenda. Thank you. Thank you, Yusek Torres. Baka lang makalimutan ko, uh, Yusek Hans, yung, uh, uh, ano natin, yung uh, very challenging ano natin sa mga seafarers, yung uh, EMSA compliance natin. Baka pwedeng pa-update lang po. Bigyan kami ng uh, report dito sa committee. M Mr. Thank Chair, you. if you say that's that's part of our uh, uh, objective here uh, dito sa bill that we are deliberating. Aman. Yes, ma'am, Mr. Chair. Siguro just a quick update. Uh, Nakapag-MOA signing po si Secretary Toots uh, with international and local partners, yung advisory committee na, na directive ni Presidente na italaga uh, nung nasa Brussels po si Pangulo talking to the ship owners, international ship owners. So na talaga na po yung council and uh, the other day uh, may assurances po from the executive secretary uh, to support the advisory council and to bring all the relevant agencies together. Thank you. Thank you, Yusek Hans. Yes, the DG uh, Umali. Opo, uh, mabilis lang, Mr. Chair, na islam po nating uh, ibahagi ng ating pong uh, DG Dan Cruz ay nakipagpulong din po kamakailan po lamang kay, uh, sa ating pong SEC Toots at si Yusek Hans po ay nandun din po. At ang ating uh, si Admin uh, Arnel Ignacio po uh, to strengthen further yung uh, TESDAS uh, OFW RISE program uh, reintegration through skills and entrepreneurship program na kung saan, Mr. Chair, I I'll just mention the, the, the portion that is very relevant to TESDA. Uh, we are trying to uh, advocate and try to uh, inform our OFWs that we have, for example, at least 150 test the online courses po, Mr. Chair, na pwede pong i-access ng ating mga... Pasi mo nun yung test the online na yan. Opo, opo, opo. Opo, opo, opo. Opo, opo. Opo, opo, Mr. Chair. Just kidding, I'm just kidding. Opo. So, so you, 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 you lamang po siguro, Mr. Chair, na among others, na programa po ng ating test na para po ma-reskill ang ating mga OFWs at maging mas mahusay ang kanilang reintegration pagbalik po sa ating bansa. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, maraming salamat. Hindi ka nauubusan, Yusek. Sige po. Last lang po, Your Honor, kasi nabanggit ng TESDA. Meron din po kami for this year, we will revive the ICT Academy. Uh, it's an ICT Academy run by the DICT. It has a big budget, Your Honor. We have uh, courses on literacy and internet and computer knowledge, all online. Tawag namin Project Click. We also have social media marketing. We also have coding for kids. Para hanggang sa elementary po ay mapag-aralan na yung coding. We also have a cybersecurity simulator and meron din ko kaming tech trends training online for AI, IoT, cloud, cybersecurity para maging masa po at accessible yung mga trainings na to. Maraming salamat. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, again, the more we need synergy. Imagine, no? Uh, para synergize tayo and the... Uh, Pare-pareho yung direction natin towards uh, creating uh, jobs and uh, 
developing our uh, program to help our uh, kababayans. Any other yung staff uh, you Sexello will ask you na lang daw after. Uh, we are extremely grateful to all our uh, resource uh, persons who took the time to be present here today and share your uh, inputs on our Senate Bill number 129 or di trabaho para sa lahat ng Pilipino Act. We also would like to again take this opportunity to thank the chairperson of the Senate Committee on Economic Affairs, Senator Grace Poe, for designating this representation to lead the uh, discussions on this uh, very important measure as also uh, uh, indicated by no less than our president himself, President uh, Bongbong Marcos. We are at the forefront of the uh, changing nature of work, and it is our duty as policymakers and implementers of state policies to ensure the competitiveness and employability of our labor workforce, provide an uh, enabling uh, environment that will allow our micro, small, and medium enterprises to grow and uh, contribute to job generation. Um, we take note that uh, we should also include tech startups, as uh, mentioned a while ago, and provide support to our enterprises to be more acquainted and move forward with digitizing our, uh, I mean, their, their, their operations. We have discussed intro introducing improvements to our active labor market programs, including strengthening our employment facilitation services, such as through the, Philipp through, through the uh, public employment service offices and the uh, field job net, etc. We have discussed identifying industries with high employment potential, equipping the labor workforce with the necessary skills and qualifications, the importance of uh, uh, yung ating, uh, basic education, that's a K-12. We have also agreed that there is a need to synergize the efforts of all government agencies, in, especially as we push for the creation of a synchronized national employment action plan for, the, for our country, taking into consideration the strengths and core functions of all agencies involved. We still have a lot to address. A lot of uh, uh, to address uh, uh, when you talk about challenges that we are facing. But we are hoping that through the uh, technical working group, we can have a deep dive and further discuss the uh, objectives, uh, key performance uh, indicators, and action points we should include. So, yung TWG natin, we are uh, setting. Uh, uh, January 26, at uh, we will invite our uh, resource persons. At uh, muli sa inyo pong lahat, maraming salamat at uh, pagpalain tayo lahat ng ating Panginoong Diyos. So this hearing is uh, now adjourned. Maraming salamat po and God bless you all. Thank you.